broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas. It's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show, the show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 27 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for May 2019. My name is Jonathan Leung, and I'm the producer, director, and editor of the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me today, fresh out of the movie theater of seeing Avengers Endgame, yeah. is Tim Peterson, Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Good. How's the movie? It was great. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> okay. It was great. It was great. You literally, like... Got out of the movie theater, drove over Drove here. straight from the movie theater parking lot. So, so you huh. probably have it fresher in your mind than I do, because I saw it like a week ago almost. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad you still think it's good, or you thought it was good. Oh, yeah, I thought point. it was really good. And uh, it was long, but it didn't seem that long. But uh, you told me, use the restroom before you go in. So I held it all the way through the movie, which is a miracle at my age. <laughs> and uh, no, it was, was really good. And I... Uh, I think that uh, anybody that hasn't seen it yet definitely needs to go watch it. Well, maybe Tim will talk about that more in the after show, because that All seems right. to be more of an after show topic. Sounds but, good. how are you doing otherwise? How are things at Mr. Gaddy's, Tim? That's what we want to know. Great. Uh, you know, last time I talked about how we kind of settled into our normal flow, and now we're getting more of the school groups. I spoke to uh, 50 principals today and uh, passed out information and got a lot of good feedback and some bookings from that so uh looking forward to doing more with the community and uh, we got a couple ideas coming down the pipe that i think are going to be really good and we'll we can discuss more of that in the after show too right and you actually posed several questions to the audience in our we previous did. after show so for those of you guys who don't watch the after show or listen to this via podcast you may not have heard that but at the end of this show in the after show section we're going to discuss some of the feedback that you got tim on some of the ideas that you threw out there right so we do want to tease that for the after show so make sure you stay tuned to that or if you're listening to this via audio podcast that you tune into our youtube page and watch that part but we do want to thank everybody for being here tonight and joining us as we answer some of your questions that we've received via our website youtube and facebook pages as well as other places and so we do want to thank you guys all for being here and we want to make shout out to everybody who's already said hi in the chat we got delusional arcade here tim and we're going to be covering something from him later in the show as okay. well we got mike here says hi hello mike and we also have Jason says hi, everyone. Well, hello, Jason. So thank you guys so much for joining us in the live chat. And remember that you can interact with the, with the show by posting your questions, your comments, or your suggestions in the live chat. And you can also leave us money there, Tim. Sometimes we don't always point that out. Right. <laughs> we do appreciate any donations we get there as well. And we're certainly glad that you guys are here with us for this May 2019 edition. Tim, is there anything else that we should say before we move on to our questions this month? No, let's get right into it this month. I Sounds think we're good. good. Okay. So, let me go ahead and pull this up here. Our first question here, Tim, is from Randy. And Randy says, I have recently acquired a Galaxy Games by CES Cocktail Arcade. This is my first time owning an arcade of any kind, so it's pretty exciting. I think we have a little typo there, Tim. Okay. That's fine. The game was playing blind, and I was able to find a local repairman to fix the issue. The problem is he is having trouble removing the monitor from the cabinet for repair. I am going to go by on Wednesday to see if I can give him a hand. If you have any knowledge of these machines, I would appreciate a point in the right direction. Thank you for your help. Okay, so here we go, Tim. We have Randy here. Now, Tim, Randy brings up a game that I don't think I'm very familiar with. Maybe you're more familiar than I am. The Galaxy Games CES Multigame Cocktail. Have, have you heard of these? Have you seen them? I have, it's like a distant memory. I remember because it's like a cartridge-based type system and stuff, but right. we've never worked on one. Sure. We should disclaim that right at the front. <laughs> But I think you were fortunate enough to find a little bit of information on the net about it that we probably can help him walk through that a little bit. Well, Tim, you were right in your assessment there. So basically, the Galaxy Games talk Cocktail was a multi-game arcade system that uses cartridges not unsimilar to Neo Geo, except right. for the fact that you could stack the cartridges. So there were four cartridge slots, and you could put a cartridge in each slot. And what it would do instead of like having switchable games is it would just add those games to your main menu. Okay. Does that make sense? So it kind of loaded them for exactly. you. Exactly. Like, so it kind of loaded them all up. And so you had like one main menu and there were boards loaded 
or games loaded on the main board, but then you could buy these extra cartridges that you could stick in these cartridge slots that would add additional games to the board. And a lot of these were, um, they're cocktail based, but they were kind of uh, more like what you'd see with Mega Touches or something yeah. like that, those kind of games. And, and thinking back to the ones I remember seeing at auction sometimes, seems like they were a cocktail style cabinet, not, right. not a stand up. Right. And it seems so like. So maybe they were sold like that. I'm not quite sure. According to everything I could find as far as the CES Games website, the archive was, of it, anyways. Was it was all cocktails for the most part when it came to these units. So, what a cool idea. Right, exactly. It really was. And we don't see them much. It seems like they were pretty rare. So I did. I was able to find some information thanks to the Internet Archive. And so I will throw this up here for Randy. We'll go ahead and do this. Unfortunately, we are not very familiar with the Galaxy Games cocktail unit from CES, but we were able to find a manual for it that briefly discusses how to open the cabinet for service and cartridge installation purposes. And Tim, I, I referenced page 14, and we have a link there. And Tim, that link is also down in the show description and show notes below. Uh, the Galaxy Games cocktail unit is a cartridge-based multi-game system designed for two players head-to-head -head competition. There were four game cartridges created for the system, and they were each named like Star Pack 1, 2, 3, and 4. Nice. So... And each main board had four slots, one for each cartridge. And Tim, I actually posted a picture of the page 14 that we that we uh, showed in the manual. It looks, Tim, like that monitor is built on a hinge. Yeah, it's very similar to how other cocktails work, though, sure. by the picture. Right. And that is that one side would have a piano-type hinge that, after unlatching it, it would come over on its side. And we have shot a video on that, so... If opening you need, a cocktail yeah, cabinet. Yeah, open a cocktail cabinet. So that probably would help with this situation also. There you go. So Randy, hopefully answers your question. Definitely check out the manual there, and the link is below in the show notes if you need help finding it. And like Tim mentioned, we have a great video on opening a cocktail cabinet that you should definitely check out that does discuss how sometimes those hinges work on cocktail cabinets. And in this particular instance, Tim, it looks like that information will be quite helpful. Right. As long as it's some kind of manufactured game, most of them operate pretty much the same. The problem we've had is the homebrew cocktail cabinets are come, you know, we've had some that take the whole top off, a lot of different methods, but that seems to be pretty standard with most cocktail cabinets. Uh, and I'm sure there's some, uh, there's some differences. Like I think of a red tent, how you open it up was really different. But most of it, you're just going to have to get in there. There's something latched or holding it or, or he hold, holding it down. Once you undo that, it should come on open. And that's what you got to find in there. Sounds good. So, Randy, hopefully that answers your question. And good luck getting that Galaxy Games cocktail table opened up. So I would love to see it. some pictures of that, Randy, that if you would send those in, just because of the rarity of it, I do think it is a pretty rare game. Absolutely. And Tim, it looked like all of the cabinet pictures that I saw had a very marble-like look to them. Mm -hmm. So like the cabinets were not like the wood grain look like you get, but it had almost like a marble type of laminate or something yeah. on them, I guess. I barely can remember that. And I remember it being a cartridge base, but that was, you know, that information, Jonathan, was really neat. So if you have one, shout out. That'd be really cool to see some pictures or video of. Sounds good. Well, Tim, I think that does it for Randy's question, but it looks like we have a couple of more shout outs in the live chat. So I'm going to go over here real quick. Uh, JR's Vintage Toys and More. Hey guys, hope you're doing great. I'm excited. I'm making my biggest game purchase ever. 46 arcade, 7 pins, which wow. include a fun house and a ton of parts. It sounds like JR has got a, a operator buyout here. I think so, sounds like it. Yeah, so Fun House is a great pinball machine for you guys that don't know. Pat Lawler designed, right? So uh, Fun House is a really great one. You got Rudy there, the little uh, talking head at you all the time right. and everything. So uh, uh, that's a good one to have. And it says... Uh, he says a ton of parts. I don't know what all the parts are, but cool we'd be deal. curious to, to know. Uh, let's see. Jose says, sup, guys. Hey, Jose. There you go. And, and then, uh, or or Josev. It has a okay. B on the end. See, my eyesight's not that good, Tim. These things are tiny. <laughs> and Emmanuel says, howdy from Texas. Well, howdy Hello. back from Texas. Of course, we are located in the great state of Texas, Tim. That's right. So a lot of great stuff going on here. But uh, we want to thank, again, all of you guys for joining us again. And, Tim, we're going to get to some other topics in the live chat. I think uh, for those of you are in the um, after show, excuse me, I think for those of you guys who didn't join us earlier, we got a couple of topics that we're going to be talking about there. So I hope you guys join us for the after show as well. But we want to thank you guys for joining us for the main show and being here. And remember that you guys can leave questions, suggestions in the live chat. Tim, I always like to throw that out there for sure. because sometimes I think people forget that this is an interactive show, right? right. We do have pre-prepared questions that we've gotten from our emails and things, but we always like to do things on the fly and help you guys out any way we can. So please, if we can, please leave us a message in the live chat. We'll try to get around to you as soon as possible. Uh, Tim, looks like we've got a couple more 
uh, in here. Let's see. YouTube Punk says, I made it, but not for long. Well, thanks for making it for just a minute. Uh, if you can only stay around for a minute, that's a, that's a minute that we appreciate, right? That's or whatever right. it is. So um, thanks for being here, YouTube Punk. Let's see. JR says, now I found the games. Time to fix the games. That's yeah. right. So uh, maybe finding the games should be part of our our uh, our slogan as well. We haven't been on a warehouse game, raid like that in a long games. time, though. That sounds uh, Take some pictures. That'd be really fun to document. Also. Absolutely, yeah. So Randy says, I finally made it. And I don't know if this is the same Randy. We just covered a question, uh, Randy. I don't know if that was yours or not. But uh, if it was, then uh, you rewind it just a bit and you'll see the <laughs> answer. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. So hopefully we covered that well. Um, let's see. YouTube punk howdy, howdy. Sup, Dell? So we're saying a lot of howdies, guys. A lot of great uh, information and chatting in the live chat. So make sure you guys uh, leave lots of messages there. And we'll try to get to them as the show progresses on. Okay, Tim, I think we're ready to move on, yes? Yes. So let us move to John, and John says, Hey, how's it going? I just picked up a golden tea cabinet and was wondering if you could help me troubleshoot it and what to look for. The monitor works, it just doesn't play the game. A few ribbons are unplugged from the board. That's what I see so far. So, Tim, John's got a, a golden tea cabinet, right. and he's saying that the monitor works. So, I mean, we don't know that for sure if the board's right. not working, probably, but what he it's means got power, is got power, it's coming, coming on, on whatever the case may be. But he's saying that it's not playing the game, and there are a few ribbons that are unplugged from the board. So, what do you think John needs to do in order to get his golden tea back up and running? Well, he needs to decide what version of that's trying to run. Sure. And what is his board and stuff. Right. And that's part of the problem, especially with games that have been around a while, and went through several stages like Golden Tee, the Golden Tee version today. It's way different from the 99, 98, 97 that we you started working on. Sure. Uh, they were JAMA and stuff, and now they're not. And you may or may not need those cables, so you really need to determine uh, if it what you need them. If they're possibly maybe missing the PC. Right. And so... There may be some some things there. That's some things. What happens though is all these conversions. Some needed parts. Some didn't need this. We need to figure out what yours is trying to run. And the great news about that though is, in the people who invented the game are still around. That's right. And they're very helpful. And so if you can determine, even if you don't know, you can send them a picture and they'll at least tell you what version you have and if those ribbon cables are even needed or necessary. A lot better than we can. But that's what we're going to recommend, that you get in touch with them directly. Yeah. And they can help you with that. Incredible technologies, right? Yes, there. incredible technologies, and they are very friendly and very helpful. Yeah, and you've had to call them about other games, right? Oh, the yeah. Past. They they make a lot of different games today, not just Golden Tee, but that is one game in particular that's a big seller for them. So not sure if yours... Now, it could just be that, you know, we always start at power, guys. Uh, you, you're going to check your power supply, make sure you're running the right voltage, make sure you're getting power up there. You need to do all that stuff too because it could be something that simple or sure. a connection going from the board to your monitor. Your monitor can't work or work properly unless it's getting the signal from the board, so you need to make sure that those connections are good. But I think the fact, like you mentioned, Tim, that he's missing or he's got some unplugged ribbon cables. I mean, we're we're kind of assuming that that may play a part. In Maybe why that he's so, the sounds like something is missing. Right. And um, and I've I've seen them uh, with a lot of different setups and stuff. A lot of them will have some some of them have hard drives and yeah. stuff. And so, if you don't have a hard drive and you got a ribbon cable, guess what? It hooks up to a lot of hard drives, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, I'm not real rocket science, but I know that much, right? There you go. <laughs> and so you could just be missing certain parts. So. The main thing is to figure out what year you have. Then we can get a manual, and most manuals have pictures, or you can call Incredible Technologies, and then they will walk you through or tell you, oh, you're missing this, or you're missing that. And they may even have the part for you. Or by then, we you can contact us back, and maybe we can help you track down exactly what you need. Sounds good. So, Tim, I'm going to go ahead and throw the slide up here real quick. So, in order to help you troubleshoot this further, like Tim mentioned, we're going to need to know which version of Golden Tee you're currently working on. While many older versions of Golden Tee use the JAMA standard for the wiring, Tim, you mentioned 98, 99, 97, a lot of those right. use JAMA wiring. Um, most of the newer versions are PC-based and use a PC with an I.O. board right. that interfaces to the controls. And, and, Tim, what I did here was I actually did a picture, this is from the Golden Tee manual, of the I.O. board. And okay. you'll see that it's got a lot of, like, ribbon-like cables, I 
mean, if you don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I'm worried that the computer is actually missing. And it could be. It could be actually unplugged, and that's another Mm -hmm. thing, too. But it's very possible. I mean, what he needs to figure out is, like, okay, these ribbon cables, where are they going, and what should they hook up to? And like Tim mentioned, finding out which version of Golden T you have will allow you to get the manual for that. And once you have the manual, you can kind of figure out where the wiring is supposed to go. And Tim, just like you mentioned, that incredible technology is still in business, still does really great work on the support side, so if you need support, you can contact them. But Tim, another thing that they have is an entire manual repository on their website that has basically all of the manuals for pretty much any Golden Tea version you're looking right. for. Right. Maybe you can even figure it out from there. Exactly. This is a, One thing we want to stress, John, if you want to go back to a live shot, is that this is a classic example of, he said he purchased this. Right. And so... Be really careful if you purchase a game that's not working. Treat it as such. I hope you got a really good deal on it. Uh, because, you know, my story is one time I bought an Arctic Thunder because it wouldn't come <laughs> on. And I'm thinking, wow, it's probably a fuse, maybe a power supply. I can fix this. And when I got in there, there was no uh, monitor computer. chassis. Yeah, there was right. no computer. There was no hour board. There was no wiring. Right. There was a tube. And, and, tube, we, and tube wires. And tube wires. And we made a really good... Um, Yoke wires. Yeah, we made a really good skateboard kind of out of the seat and mm-hmm. used it rolling stuff, move stuff around the shop, but that's all it ever was good a for. A $200 rolling it seat. It would have cost a <laughs> lot more to fix it than it was worth it. So be real careful with that, guys. I just want to stress, anytime the game, you say, oh, well, it's probably this, it's probably that. Don't guess. If it's not working, treat it as exactly what it is not working. Don't let somebody tell you, oh, it's probably just a fuse. If it was an easy fix, granted, they would have already fixed it and sold it for more money. Uh, Make sure that when you are looking at a game that you are getting the best deal based on what you are seeing at that time. Exactly. And always look in the back, Tim. And once you buy the game, make sure that all of the different parts are screwed down, like monitor chassis Mm -hmm. and boards and stuff, uh, power supplies, because sometimes uh, people don't tend to secure those things very well. I don't know why, but um, transporting games is very important, too. But like Tim mentioned, any non-working game, you got to treat it like it's not working. Basically assume right. that it is empty, an empty cabinet. Just like when you go to buy a used car, if it won't start, they may tell you, oh, it's just a battery, or they'll always give you some speed. Oh, we put a battery in, it'll be fine. Granted that most of the time, if it was just a battery, they would already put one in it and it'd right. be running. So might be, need an engine rebuild, right. might need a new transmission. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, steering wheel, some major components they are exactly. probably missing. <laughs> so be real careful with that, guys. Just a tip that I'm going to throw in there right now because of the fact I've been burned. And, uh, you know, I did see that he purchased it. We're hoping that it's not missing a computer or something major. It's, those things are getting hard to find. And when you can't find them, they're not always cheap. Sometimes cheaper to buy a working game than it is to buy parts for a working game. Absolutely. So I think it's a good warning for everybody, Tim, and for John here who's in this situation. Hopefully he's got all the parts there and he can figure out what's missing or where what needs to hook to. And the best way to do that is by, again, trying to determine which version of Golden T you have and then going to uh, Incredible Technologies' website, look at their manuals, Tim, matching up the manual with your game and hopefully being able to find exactly what you're looking for. Well, Tim, I have that link below in the show notes for the um, Incredible okay. Technologies manual, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. And John, thank you for your question and good luck getting that golden tee up and running. Okay, Tim, we got some uh, activity. YouTube Punk sent 10 bucks. May wow. the fourth be with you. Thank what you. are your go-to shops for cat kits, flybacks, and monitor chassis? Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> but you so, know, um, go to shop for cap kit, Tim. It's definitely changed over the years. I, I still, most of them are on our links page, yeah. but I still like, um, uh, help me here, John, for, for a second. We like Paradise Arcade. We like, um, um, I was going to say Syracuse Semiconductor is good. I mean, Twisted Quarter has Twisted cap kits. Quarter is, yeah, I was about to say, if you're looking was for the that. one I was trying to think of offhand. Yeah, Syracuse Semiconductor, um, though, has Cajun a lot of cap Arcade, cap. we like Absolutely. a lot. Uh, uh, you know, it's changed up over the years because we bought so many. We bought hundreds from Bob Roberts right. in the past, and when him not with him not selling them, and about the time when we quit really fixing them, right. um, we haven't bought any. You know, and I used to buy a lot from Zenon Electronics. Zenon, and um, yeah, you know, I don't. There was just a, and I've we've even made our own cap kits at Fry's and stuff. But probably, uh, get, having said all that, the fact that we don't buy them much anymore, or we still have, we have tons of uh, caps and stuff in storage, mm-hmm. um, would mean that there's probably some new places out there. So, you know, mm-hmm. search around. I'm sure anybody on our Facebook page or um, one of the arcade monitor 
repair pages would right. be glad to I, I like you. Syracuse Semiconductor a lot. I will say that. Um, that's a good one to go to. They they sell uh, pretty much everything. They sell a variety of flybacks as well and some other parts. And as I well believe, if repair. I remember, they're the ones that sell some of the caps that, that don't come correct. in everybody else's kits. Yes, correct. Like they the sell. filter caps and stuff. It's more of a complete cap kit, so it may cost a little bit more, but... In the end result, you know, there back in the day, there were tons of p- people that sold cap kits that didn't really include all the caps. Right. And it seems like some of the ones that were important uh, later on, you know. Right, exactly. Ian Kellogg, I'm going to throw a big shout out to him because I do like his cap kits as well. I, You know, he has been kind of up and down with his store and everything like mm-hmm. that. But um, I think it's back up now, I hope. But he has some really cool cap kits. And Tim, he usually puts them like in a little... Uh, a little, uh, he kind of puts them down and then tapes them across and labels where each one goes. It's pretty wow. cool. So it's a very nice okay. cap kit. But Ian Kellogg, I'm definitely going to throw a, a, a shout out to. Zanin, like you mentioned, Tim. And then also, of course, um, Twisted Quarter, which we order a lot of stuff from. And then Syracuse Semiconductor as well. Right. Uh, and Syracuse Semiconductor has a lot, like you can buy it with the filter caps, without the filter caps. You can get, he has a, a lot of selection of things you need. And a lot of these places will also sell the flybacks, Tim. Right. We, we highly recommend going ahead and getting the full cap kit if possible because it just seems like uh, what's Murphy's Law. You know, the one cap you don't buy is the one that's going to go bad first. Right. And so we like to com- do a complete rebuild when we get a chance. So, and as far as flybacks go, I would also throw out Chad at Arcade Cup. Sure. Because, I mean, even though he does monitor repair, he sells a lot of replacement flybacks as well on his right. website. So if you're looking for flybacks, uh, ArcadeCup.com as well will get you there. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Tundra Guy says, I just put a Raspberry Pi in an arcade one up and love it. I know it's not the same as a real arcade, but with someone whose basement has gotten taken over by the wife, I am space restricted. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think the arcade one ups, we've talked about this before, are a great alternative for people who don't have the space for like a full cabinet and they play right. pretty decent. There's you know? something coming up about that later in the show that yeah. he might want to stay in touch with. Now, it sounds like he did the Raspberry Pi mod, but Tim, there right. are some other mods out there, obviously, that we'll talk about here in just a bit. Um, let's see, <laughs> Michael. Am I banned? Did I offer? Uh, did I offer my question above? I don't know if I saw a question above from you, Michael. I don't know. I, we didn't ban you. No. <laughs> the only reason Ask we'll, again, Michael. Only, a, the only glitch. reason we'll ban you is if there's spam. Now, if you put links um, in the in the thing, if you put a link in the live chat, I think automatically it will. It will um, it'll block uh, maybe it. so. Okay, so if you do put a link in there, uh, so leave the link off, but ask your question, and we can get around to it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Tender guy. Um, he says, uh, not a lot of light marquees are coming out for the one-ups. That makes them look a lot better. You know, some of the lighted marquee kits I've seen for the arcade one-ups are not very good. Right. Like the artwork reproduction is uh, so-so. Okay. Now, with that said, the Golden Tee arcade one-up is gonna comes with a lighted marquee. I don't know if you oh, knew that. did not know Comes that, with yeah. a light marquee and also comes with the riser. Right. So, but um, some of the kits I've seen are kind of hit or miss. I need royalties for this. There you go. I'm telling you. <laughs> they did let you come to their place. And they did. They did take some of my suggestions. That's so exactly hopefully. right. So there you go. Oh, and the YouTube bunk says Ian Kellogg is back online from his house fire. Got it. So yeah, um, chat at Arcade Cup. Chad at ArcadeCup.com. And we usually recommend Chad for monitor repair, Tim. Yes, but it's a good source for parts. Good source for parts as well. He has quite a few flybacks on his website if you guys are looking for a replacement fly- flyback. So, ArcadeCupCUP.com. Okay, Tim, are we caught up? I think so. Okay. Joe Sasbo does amazing artwork for Arcade 1-Ups. Have you seen that, Tim? No. That's from Delusional's Arcade. So, uh, Joe Sasbo has an artwork website. I know Joe's does, work. Yeah, exactly. He does Arcade 1-Up artwork and is fantastic looking. Oh, cool. He's got some for Mortal Kombat 11 and some other new games. And you can, NBA Jam, you can basically skin your Arcade 1-Up to be a different game if you'd like. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, here we go. We're going to show this for them. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, Tim, I think we're caught up to the live chat now. We'll so be right back, guys. That's right. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and move on to our next question on the outline, and that's from Euphoric. Euphoric says, I want to upgrade my old Sigma arcade cabinet to a 16 one Everything works great on it, but I have no idea what I am in for. The, the game is Spiders from 1981. What do I need for this project? Now, Tim, before we get too far into this, how familiar are you with the game <laughs> Spiders? Wow, that is a pretty rare game, and everybody's screaming right now, leave it alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's probably my first response is uh, build a kit or something, make your 60 and one leave that Spider game alone. The Holland Computers kit that we talk about. Somebody that. would really like that. <laughs> right. But having being fair... That's not. That's his priority. He's the one that owns the game. Um, I do know that I, I. I don't know that I've ever played Spiders. Maybe once, 
at a, maybe at a convention or something. Sure. I have. It seems like I've seen it, and I know you're going to show a picture of it for everybody that does not aware with it. But it, it has like a two way joystick. It was kind of like a or did it even have a joystick? It was buttons. It depends like kind of so like Galaxian or, or something. Galaga. Yeah. So it depends on the version. Um, apparently, there's one version that has two buttons, like what you would have with like asteroids. Right. And then there's one that has a left and right joystick, two way joystick, like what you would have with a Galaxy. Right. That's kind of so what I was thinking. So there's two different versions. You. It depends on which version you played. But either one is only two directions, right? Right. So you're gonna definitely have to upgrade to a four way joystick and probably add some buttons and. All that kind of good stuff, but please don't. <laughs> so, I, I <laughs> Sell just, the spiders, really, good generic. Uh, candy, let's right? go ahead and bring up the picture, John. Okay. This is such a cool game. I don't remember gameplay. I don't haven't played it in Mame in a while or enough to know what it's like. Somebody that has maybe want to chime in over there. But you know, it, it's a very cool game, and it, it kind of has that um, century feel to it, right? And. Uh, you know, I can't remember who even made Spiders, but... He said, I think it was Sigma. Sigma? See, yeah. it's a very pretty rare game. So, oh no, he does, old Sigma arcade cabinets. Yeah, there you go. so it's a Sigma game, which is, like I said, you don't see a ton of them in general. Right. But you're going to have to put a four-way joystick in there if you're going to have to do that, which we're going to call... And uh, if there was a way to do it and not drill or something, I would I would probably go into more detail. But the fact you're going to have to drill into that uh, beloved game of somebody's, I would probably really highly recommend that you don't. Okay, I'm going to read the slide since it's up here, Tim. So the game Spiders only uses two directions for gameplay, which we talked about, Tim, which means that you'll need to install a four-way joystick for a 16-one board. If your kind of has the two-way joystick, you could drill out the opening a bit, use a four-way in its place. If not, you could always install it in the center of your panel. So, Tim, if he has this spider set up, for instance, he could just install a four-way joystick in the direct center. We also recommend having at least two action buttons so that you can play all of the games on the 16-1 properly. You will need to rewire the cabinet using a JAMA harness. But yeah. the good news is that the power supply that's in it should work. It actually does. I looked at the pinouts for Spider Stem. Plus 5, plus 12 are on that power supply. So technically he could use the power supply if he didn't want to. I should have mentioned that it's probably not JAMA because it's no, 1981. Not JAMA. So not JAMA. it's a lot of wiring. It's really going to be a lot of work too to convert that over. And I doubt anybody sells a conversion thing for it because it's such a rare type game Right. that it would really be best to use another game and let somebody that really wants to collect Sigma games or just wants a, a more rare game would probably pay enough for that to for you to buy a kit and to build your own. There and you then go. you wouldn't have to destroy the game. There you go. So you for a couple answers to your question. So yes, it's definitely possible to use a 61-year Spider's cabinet. But like Tim mentioned... It's such a rare game. Why not find somebody, sell it to a collector, somebody who really would get appreciation out of it, and find like a generic cabinet? Or Tim, he could even do a instead of a generic cabinet, maybe he could do uh, like the Holland Computers cabinet that we talked exactly. about. Exactly. Build one from scratch, and then you'll have a nice sixteen and one, and you won't have torn up a nice rare game that some collector is yelling about right now as we right. <laughs> as we actually no, discuss. Oh, I love this. spiders. Give me that. That's right, exactly. So, but anyway, you, you remember playing spiders? I, can't I you know, even it remember. seems like you know, Tim. I feel like I played everything at some point, but right. I don't specifically remember spiders i don't specifically remember it i guess so if i did play it it was a rasher game right but it had, if i did play it it wasn't memorable right i guess that's what it comes down to maybe so so, so maybe it's worth doing I don't anybody know, in the chat want to chime in i'd like to hear your opinion of if you've ever played it there you go so sounds good hopefully answers your question you fork and uh, good luck with your conversion or good luck with selling it if you decide to go with a new cabinet for your 60 and one Okay, Tim. Uh, Jason just sent us 10 bucks, and he oh. says it's never just a fuse, and he's right. <laughs> um, you, take that back. We had a rampage. Just a fuse. <laughs> so it happens It happens one out of every 20 times you may get one. Right. Something causes a fuse to blow. Exactly. Most something, of the time. Something causes fuse to blow. But we do want to appreciate you sending us to $10. Thank you for the donation. We always appreciate those. Um, let's see. Coast to Soul Music says, any claw machine tips? Well, claw machines are... Are basically all the same. That's a, the deal with them. Even the new ones, they work by a white. The best best tip I can give on a claw machine is make sure it's wound correctly. And if you're looking, let's say you're going to have two wheels, one here and one here, and the string is going to be wrapped around, make sure it's coming off the right side of that wheel. If it's on the left, that claw machine is going to give you a lot of problems. It needs to come out the right and go wrap around. That's my biggest tip. 
Other than that, just some adjustments and things. Uh, they do sell universal uh, boards now that and work universal with, crane heads and with, everything. Else. Yeah, which make that so cool. So if you found, let's say, an old clean sweep or something that you just want the retro look, but you want it to play like new, you could always go that route. And I think that's super because you can't always get all the parts and stuff for some of the really older ones. But they work really simple, and they're they're great money makers. We have several at work, and we love them. They just they really don't give much problems, uh, especially the newer style. Some of the bugs and stuff have gotten worked out. But the older ones, what happens is, John, they hit the ground. If you'll shorten yours where it can't actually hit the ground and lay on its side, when, or to keep your plush or whatever you're trying to get in there enough to where it doesn't go down that far, when it hits the ground, it would come unwound, and that would cause a lot of problems. So keep your plush full uh, and, or keep it the string tight enough to where it can't actually go down and lay on the side. There Sounds go. good. Good tips. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you meant playing or repair tips, but I like, you know, we're repair shows. So repair tips is what right. we give. That's right. <clears throat> playing, you get a magnet and you put it on the side. <laughs> so that's another show. There Sorry. you go. Uh, Matthew says, uh, hi from New Hampshire. Hello. How do y'all tell if the CRT tube is shot or needs reduvenation? rejuvenation versus the chassis needing repair so most of the time the symptom of like a faded type chassis or faded colors could be either a cap kit or a tube we usually do the cap kit first and when right. it doesn't work right. we don't get a lot of difference or we can tell that the chassis has been rebuilt then we're like we start usually it's so you know nine times out of ten it's in the it's in the cap kit so that one out of ten uh, we did shoot a video on testing a tube. We did. And that does help, especially if it's got certain colors that are out. Right. That will show you. So watch that video on testing a monitor tube, which you can do with any monitor pretty much. And it's just real simple how we do it. And uh, we show how to do that. And just go around and the colors will show whether you got a game board, anything plugged in. Right. Just needs to be on. Exactly. And a uh, little, little bit, of, it's not too dangerous. And it's kind of fun to do. If you've never done it, watch that video and, and tell us what you think. Yeah, so checking a monitor tube obviously will help out with that. Uh, Tim, a lot of people may mistake like a bad tube for a bad, like a color missing, which happens a lot. Mm. Uh, so that like when you check the tube, what it'll do is it kind of bypasses some of those transistors on the monitor chassis. So like, let's say you're not getting red, for instance. When you check the tube, you may, st you may get red, you may not. But if you're getting red, that means the tube is good, but there's something in your chassis that's not working. Right. See so, you know what I'm saying? So like, let's say your picture doesn't have red but when you do the check you get the red obviously it's something in the chassis go. that's having a problem so there are some checks like that you can do but and a lot of times the faded the faded colors and things yeah. Tim, washed out colors um after a cap kit if you still have that a lot of times that's where we'll start looking at rejuvenation and most times when the tubes go bad they're they're pretty common like with one that's really got a lot of screen burn there's you can tell it's got some age to it it's usually you know, you can tell by looking at the, the outside of the tube, too, a lot of times. If it's starting to really burn in and have some plays on it, then it could be a bad tube. Now, but it's easy to start there, though, before you buy a cap kit, and it's real simple to check. There you go. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Michael says, let's try again. I've got a Sanyo EZ, no noise issues, rebuilt audio. Now, Evan did cap kit on the chassis. Now, tons of noise. Why? So a Sanyo EZ monitor didn't have, it sounds like um, it had no noise issues, but then he rebuilt the um, the audio. Now Evan did the cap kit on chassis and now a ton of noise. Why? I mean, the only thing I can think of is if there, I mean, usually, you know, there's that audio, the little audio um, board that's yeah. on the, the monitor. I mean, if there's a cap put in wrong or if right. there's something wrong with your board. Like, yeah. if it's not sending the audio well to the amplifier, because that's what that really is on the Sanyo EZ, is an amplifier. Right. So if the audio is not coming correctly out of the board, obviously, then we could have that. Uh, but it but, was... But it wasn't doing the issues wasn't before. wasn't working until this happens, which made me think, yes, either the a cap got put in backwards, which is entirely possible even from a professional, uh, or some of the solder flowed in touch. Right. So there's, there, you know, there's not a space a between bridge. there. May have right. a bridge. That's one thing that I would check. And worst case scenario, just tell him, hey, I'm getting a bad audio. Can I send you the audio board back? Would you recheck it? Or it could have been a bad cap. Just I've seen caps that are new Be bad. that were bad. We have had. We've actually had that before. It's happened before. Just because you get a new cap kit doesn't necessarily mean that every cap kit in it's going to be good. Tim, you go and buy a new TV, 
Sometimes right. the TV doesn't work out of the box. Exactly. And so it's the same way with caps. I mean, it's rare, but every so often you will get a bad cap in a cap kit that's brand new. And just for some reason, it may have dried out or there may be something else wrong with it that would cause that issue. Now, other things that it could possibly be when you hook it back up, is your, gra- is your chassis grounded good? Uh, you know, that can cause some static and some things like that. Uh, did you move the game? Maybe there's a place in your room, something near it that's caused a problem. I would check all the wiring as well. Make sure that you're getting aud- your, your audio wires from the board to the amplifier work, you know, are all nice. They're all making a good connection, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, I, I mean, there's a lot of things it could be, but I'm with you, Tim. Maybe, you know, check, sending it back to whoever did the cap kit saying, hey, I'm getting a little bit of noise on the line. Could you double check it for me? Or like you mentioned, Tim, just, um, you know, just trying to see if there may be any bad caps on their ESR meter or something else. Yeah. You know, just because just because you have a new cap doesn't necessarily mean it's working properly. Right. So. And a lot of times they don't have a way necessarily to test them in your game like you do. So uh, I would definitely contact him about that and see what if he won't come through or help you with it. Sounds good. So hopefully answers your question. Uh, please let us know if you need additional help with that. We'll try to help you out there, Michael. So. Uh, Danny says, good to see you guys again. Nice shirts. Uh, Tim, mm. you're wearing one I got for your birthday. For birthday, yeah. So, And I'm wearing a, a Captain America shirt because I'm a big Captain America nerd. <laughs> so, you know, there you go. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Um, Iceman says hello. Hello, Iceman. Uh, John says, I have a Hantrex Polo 33 inch that all the colors went dark slowly, almost like the brightness was turned down all the way. I turned up the brightness on the flyback and it didn't help. Any idea? So, Tim, this sounds more like a high voltage issue. Like yes. we're losing our bleep B plus. Exactly. So, I mean, because, I mean, for it to be, like, for all everything to kind of dim like that, right. Tim. I mean, now it could be a bad flyback, but it's something in the high voltage section. Right. And so the very first thing we check is your B plus voltage. Yes. So when those colors, if if um, they're good when it comes on and then they start to fade over time, check the B plus voltage to see if it's fading with it. And he said the keyword that Handerex... Uh, chassis was really bad about little filter caps. Some of the little tiniest guys going right. out in there, and eventually they go completely out. Right. And uh, we've replaced many of those and brought it right back to life. The right. littlest, smallest those cap are those in our same kit. caps. Those caps are going to be in that high voltage section that right. we talked about, Tim. And so, right. Yes, you want to check every part. Right in the part. middle of your. Right. You want to check every part in your high voltage line, Tim, to make sure. So basically everything coming from the plug all the way to the flyback. You want to make sure that everything is getting good voltage all the way through. Um, the B plus though specifically, make sure that you're getting good full B plus through there because that can cause, if that B plus drops over time, that can cause that kind of dimming that you're describing. For sure. So, uh, Joe, easy CRT fix. Replace with an LCD monitor. Why would anyone want to fix those things, Tim? <laughs> Why would anybody want to fix a CRT? Well, sometimes it's the way that the game looks actually looks too good. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of that classic feel. It's like saying, why would you want to drive a 57 Chevy when you drive a new Chevy? Well, it just looks cool. It has a different... There's a lot of people who like 57 Chevys. It has a, <laughs> it has a different look to it. And when you play the game, uh, even with a new monitor, which we do recommend, um, it, it's just, a, for some people, it's just a that grainy type, feel or look raster lines and stuff are, are just what they remember what they how they remember playing the game so you kind of keep it classic like that absolutely uh let's see john says you're crazy and i think you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, who'd want an lcd yeah you know it's to each his own no fighting right tim right to each his own if you want lcds lcds for everybody you want crt crts for everybody so there you go but um what i think we talked about this before tim eventually we're just going to have to go LCD. Yeah, eventually. I mean, they're not making CRTs anymore. So. And it is cheaper to repair one than it is to replace one. Absolutely. In most cases, yes. Most cases. So D uh, DS Ford says, hey guys, good to see my favorite arcade repair dudes. Wanted to say that I really appreci- appreciate Tim's comments in the last episode on his less than motivated employee. Oh. Okay. I think that was two episodes ago, but yeah, that, was, that was a very good story. For those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, I think that was episode 25, Tim, where you talked about your less than motivated employee in the after show and yeah. what you did with that. All right. Well, so, and mm-hmm. um, the new guy that you hired is... Off and running, doing great. There you go. And well worth the extra money I'm paying him over the last guy. <laughs> there you go. A uh, quick update there. Yeah. I like it. Um, let's see. John says, I'll look into the caps on the B+. Plus. That sounds good. And okay, I think we're caught up. All we're right. caught up. We're caught up. Okay, so if you guys have anything else, again, leave them in the comments. We'll get to them as we move along. But now, Tim, it's time to get to GB's question. And I'm just going to assume Ghostbusters. How about that? Okay. (laughs) So Ghostbusters writes, I have a San Francisco rush, and the game plays great. The monitor was just replaced with a Neotech 2701, but periodically the screen will go blank. 
for a split second and then come back on. It's very irritating. Any thoughts? Ghostbusters. Okay, Tim. So we have Ghostbusters here. GB. Okay, I won't say Ghostbusters. GB. Okay. But um, GB, excuse me, has a San Francisco Rush and he has a Neotech 2701 mm-hmm. monitor in that San Francisco Rush. Right. And every so often it will flicker and turn off for a second and then come back on. Yeah. So, so generally when we see that, we're thinking about cold solder joints or something just not getting power or almost what we talked about earlier, you got that filter cap that's starting to fail. Uh, but a lot of times it's broken traces or wires when we're because it comes right back on. Right. But still very annoying when you're playing the game and then all of a sudden it stops working or starts working and you know, kind of back and forth, back and forth. Now, I mean, there are some things that could be, you want to check your power supply, of course, that those are not just dropping the voltage and then, or your power supply could be so close to the voltage that when it goes to a certain length, you know, then it, or a certain level, like it drops down to 4.9 or something, then it shuts off, but then the then the power supply goes back up because it's not being pushed and starts your game again. Uh, so I would definitely check the power supply on that one also. And you see, and, and Tim, that's really important for people to understand is that when a board gets taxed really hard, especially in driving games, it seems like, that sometimes you will have signals dropping out or things like that because, right. you know, if you're not getting... The, when the Basically, the demand for voltage becomes higher, and so if your power supply is not meeting that voltage, then you may have a cutout for a second from the board, not necessarily from the monitor. But kind of like we were talking about, guys, uh, with the previous question that we got in the live chat is that a lot of times this is related to a high voltage issue on the monitor chassis. So make sure that you check, like Tim mentioned, for cracked or broken solder joints on the chassis. It could just be that, like, for just a brief second, like, you know, it, you know that cold solder joint kind of disconnects and then reconnects real quick. So make sure you touch up all the solder, all the cracked, broken solder joints on the monitor chassis for sure um check all the broken traces especially in the input wiring tim yeah so make sure that the wiring ring between the board and the main board and the chassis is good make sure all that wiring is making a good connection uh and like you mentioned tim i mean you know it 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 really that high voltage section is very important so you do want to make sure that all of the connections are being made there trace wise and that all of the parts are in there are good filter caps and and um, the, the horizontal output transistor, flybacks, B plus voltage is good. You want to make sure that all that stuff is good. And when it drops again, kind of like we were recommending before, check the B plus voltage to see if you got a, vo- a drop in that as well. Right. So that's another thing to do. But Tim, a lot of times we've seen this be just a broken trace. Very, seen it a very lot. Very common. So where we just had one broken trace on the monitor chassis, it was causing it. And once we soldered it up, it was fine. So um, that's why we're going to recommend that first. Just go through and do all that. And Tim, I know you've, you've told the story before, but Michael, who was like our expert monitor repair guy, would always go through and just fix all the, all the broken traces first, right? He would just before he'd ever even start working on the board, he would just flip it over and start uh, repairing or just start touching up solder on traces. Right. The main traces, you know, like coming from the uh, chassis. I mean, from the main board and stuff. Right. So that's definitely something that fixes a lot of a lot of games, a lot of chassis, a lot of main boards. And so make sure try that first and see if that works. Check all your wiring and stuff. Then check the high voltage line. Hopefully, between those areas, you'll get your game back up and running. And Tim, uh, of course, you have the um, you have your monitor. You know, it's a Neotech twenty seven hundred one. A KLOV has a nice repository of monitor manuals yes. that you can go to, and there's a link below that you can see. And we also put that on the outline which i'll put up here um that you'll see down there at the very bottom but uh like we mentioned it does sound like you're having a problem with either power supply or video input sections of your monitor chassis so make sure you look for any cold cracked or broken solder joints in the sections make sure you're checking the wires and the cable that run from the main board to the monitor chassis and also obviously the high voltage sections of the monitor chassis as well uh, we've seen this occur, like Tim mentioned, in the main board itself. You may just need to, you know, turn up your power supply. So that's something to think about. But there are monitor manuals that you can find on KLOV site, and the Neotech 2701 is there. Depending nice. on which version you have, there are monitor manuals for that there. So you may want to check that out if you haven't already. So, GB, Ghostbusters, whatever your name is, okay. uh, good luck getting that San Francisco Might be Rush. Green Bay. Green Bay. Could be Green Bay. There you go. But um, good luck getting that San Francisco Rush back up and running 100%. Hopefully you can get that little flash out of your picture and it'll operate well for years to come. Okay, we're coming. Oh, Michael says, late, but I'm here. Well, Thanks hey, for being here, Michael. We always appreciate you being here. John says, what's the best tool to remove pins out of a KK Edge card connector? So what what is the best tool for removing pins? And, you know, when I think of edge connectors, Tim, um, a lot of times on those, we just use, like, small screwdrivers. Yeah, a really small screwdriver works good. But they do make a 
um, a pin popping a tool. pin tool for that. And I want to say that uh, a lot of pinball uh, guys sell that, like uh, pinballlife.com, stuff like that. They sell them because you have a lot of those type of connectors on a pinball game. Right, pinball you don't have machine. as many in arcade games. Right. Maybe just your monitor input right. is the only one in your game. So uh, we've had a lot of luck just using a very small, like a jeweler screwdriver or something, but they do make a tool that probably makes that a tiny bit easier. I don't. I've used it and haven't found a ton of difference with it though. Uh, the ones that's the edge connectors are a little bit harder for me to take out. Sometimes I have used an edge connector tool. You can Google that one. Uh, that will help a little bit more with that. There you go. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Michael, can you actually get the deep pinning that have all the all kinds of tools? They aren't expensive either. You, oh, you can actually get deep pinning that have all of the kinds of tools that aren't expensive either. Deep pinning kits. Yeah. So you get a deep pinning kit for the Molex. I think Hap sells one. Yeah, that one surprised me. Hap has all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm sure if they don't, you get one from Mauser or DigiKey or one of those mm -hmm. Molex dealers. They probably have some of those deep pinning kits. But a lot of times, me and Tim just use a, a small jeweler screwdriver to, to take those pins out. Most of the time. So there yeah. you go. Uh, Joe says, I got a Sega Turbo, bought it broken. When it powers on, the screen monitor is frozen on the demo start screen. Where should I start? Thank you, D Joe in Detroit. So, uh, Tim, well, I think we have a saying around here, right? right? Always start at power. Right. Yes, the, the ASAP approach works a lot of times, and it's exactly what sounds like wrong with yours, is that your power supply is getting to where it's starting to be pushed, and it's failing. So it may just need to be tweaked and turned up a little bit, or it may be time to replace it. Check your voltages at the time before and after and see if there's not a drop. Yeah, and it sounds like it's coming up frozen, Tim, for the most part. Like, okay. let's see. It's never, uh, it's, never yeah, able to. It's frozen to. on the demo demo start screen. So, yeah, maybe it boots a little bit and then freezes. It sounds right. like something like that. So, it could be that. It could be it could be, uh, it could be the board itself, obviously. It so, could be. I mean, we do have a video on inspecting an arcade board, which is a great place to start. But um, a lot of times it could be RAM or ROM chips, depending on maybe it's trying to load things into memory. It's having a trouble doing that. Or maybe it can't load from the ROM chips. Maybe that's the problem. So, it could be either one of those. could be a number of traces on the board are broken. I mean, when you're starting in the board repair, Tim, there's a lot of different things. It right. Could be, I would you know, be interested to see if it'll come up in test mode because if it does and it's not you're not processing much in test mode sure. you're just very simple screens and stuff but then when you go to process video it's happening i'd be very very suspectful of that power supply sounds good uh let's see john says what's your favorite type and brand of solder i, I don't um, think we we really have like a brand we use i mean we've used radio shack solder a lot I mean, yeah. just because it was quick and easy to get right I mean, when, when you could buy it yeah, i don't exactly. even know if you can buy it they there still now. sell it on their website and you're next to um we have a store here called hobby town that sells yes. a lot of radio shack stuff, that's probably so. where i would get it it's about the same um so you know what to be honest a solder with a little bit of lead in it seems to work better well, but i was thinking a lot like is it 60 40 60 40 rosin? Yeah. yeah i was about to say rosin core I mean, I and I've seen a lot of people buy the really huge solder, and it's very hard to work with. So uh, the sixty forty seems to be working out, be the best for what we like. It's been a while since I bought solder. You know, we buy solder in and like you know, huge roll just rolls of it. Lasts so. forever. Exactly. So I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I can't remember the last time I actually went to the store and bought it. But you, I think you can actually buy Weller brand and stuff. Yeah, they do. But um, they have some. I think we have that link to. I was gonna look on the website. I think we actually have that link to. But um, it, I mean, doesn't brand wise though. I haven't found really any. I was about to say, be, is, is there any difference between? I mean, you know, isn't it? It's pretty. Somebody much, that does more solder than us will probably be able to answer that. Yes, there's a lot of difference when you do it. When you don't do it, uh, you know, as, any more often. We do it quite often, but maybe not as much as somebody that just works on boards continually. All the time, I was about to say. So, so, I mean, I think it really depends. But, I mean, you know, 6040 rosin, core solder, I guess, is, I mean, that's what we've done for Right. Years, and then right? I know people that won't use lead-based solder at all. And right. And I have found it to take a long time to heat it. <laughs> I, I, I would prefer a little bit of lead in mine. I'm just, I was, but I ate a lot of paint chips as a yeah, kid. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. So, right? yeah. well, I was going to say, I mean, I think on here we, we do the Alpha Fry is the stuff that we that we recommend, the 6040, on our arcade toolbox. I was looking okay. that up. And, I mean, that's fine. Brand, we really haven't found a brand that's any better than any other brand, I guess. I know, like right. you said, there may be some board guys out there that are saying, oh, you need to go with this brand or whatever the case may be. Well, we've used all sorts of different brands, really never had an issue with any of them. No, right? 6040. So, 
40, though. Yeah, 60 40 is the stuff that, I mean, we usually get rosin core solder. So, I mean, but I, besides that, I mean, brand wise, get whatever brand is you, you trust right. or whatever. If you can buy something in town, that's nice. That exactly. I mean, that's the, it seems like when we it need in. it, we always just, we always just go to Radio Shack. And now with Hobby Town, right. selling Radio Shack stuff. They do have more there. Radio Shack parts, thank goodness. Exactly. I never planned far enough ahead to say I'm mm-hmm. going to be out of solder. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, it's always I'm, right in the middle exactly. of the Exactly. I'm like soldering. So- oh, wait a second. I'm out. Right. So, there you go. Uh, Michael says, let's see. Uh, Urson, Multicar, and Kessler are my go-to. Um, or Kester. Whichever one you do, do not buy lead-free. That stuff is junk, just like you mentioned. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and so, no lead-free. Um, if you're in California, that may be the only one Maybe. they sell. I, I can't remember if they sell the lead stuff. Um, you know, California's done away with a lot of um, lead products. Right. So, there you go. But anyway, so there you go. I guess we can move along here, Tim. We got a couple more questions, it looks like, so let us move on with Chris. Okay. And he says, Hey, man, I have a question, if I may. I have a Mortal Kombat 2 arcade game that does something funky. I like that, Tim. When I boot it up and apply credits, the Player 2 side will automatically select Player 2 and pull the figure to the left. If I join in with Player 1, it plays perfectly. In, di- in diagnosis mode, diagnostic mode, um, it claims that the switch is pushed for the back pin and the player to select pin. I changed the cherry switches on both, but it still didn't fix the problem. Any ideas, guys? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, Chris. So, Tim, we have Chris here. He's got Mortal Kombat 2. And basically, when he puts in a credit for it, it automatically starts when he goes to like the character select. And then the character constantly moves back. Right. Okay. And so what do you think is happening here that would cause the player to to just automatically start and then for the player two character just continuously move back? Well, the fact that he changed the cherry switch tells me that it's probably not a switch issue, but it may be in how he wired up the switch or the wires going to the switch or or in the wrong place. So a couple things he's going to need to do is easy thing to do is to know whether he hooked up the switch correctly or not. Right. We'll show that in a second. The next thing will be to find the pinouts and to trace it back and to see what is stuck on or to literally unplug uh, everything and start one wire at a time to see which one is causing the problem. But uh, I think it's a micro switch wiring issue if I had to guess. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and put that up because, Tim, that's what I guess too. Mm. First thing to check is your micro switch wiring. Make sure that you have the ground wire connected to the ground prong. Or, or the common prompt, common, in, right. uh, which is usually located by itself on the bottom of the switch, and your button wire is connected to the normally open or NO prong. And Tim, I have a little diagram over to the left there that you can see. Um, if you hook your button wire to the normally closed prong, it will cause the behavior you are describing. Exactly. Okay, to a T. Also, check for broken wires themselves. Make sure they're not, you know, make sure there's no wires that are broken, cut, or damaged. If there are areas in contact with the ground, it can also cause this issue. And, Tim, something else that I'm thinking about while I'm here is that Mortal Kombat 2 typically has a Molex connector that connects between the control panel and the main board yes. for the controls. And so make sure that that Molex mm-hmm. connector, like all of the, they check the continuity on all those wires. Make sure they're all going to the right place and that all the continuity checks out uh, through there as well. Because it, there could be something kind of wonky and that Molex connector connections as well. Or if you want to, do um, continuity checks from the buttons all the way back to the jamma harness. So that, exactly. So that way Great you know for start. a fact you're getting all the way all the way there. So is there anything else that we missed here for Chris's question, Tim? No, I really feel like it's something in the wiring or just something hooked up wrong. Gotcha. And maybe this will help him. Sounds good. So Chris, hopefully answers your question. Good luck getting that Mortal Kombat 2 uh, up and running 100%. Hopefully the two-player will be able to play very soon. So... Okay, Tim, we have Mr. Dwayne here. He said, sorry, I had to pick up the son from soccer practice. Here now. Welcome, Dwayne. That's what counts, is Mm -hmm. that you're here now. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're glad to have you here. Tell the soccer coach he needs to cut it short on the first first Thursday Thursday night of the month. That's right, exactly. I got a a live show to be at, Tim. That's right, exactly correct. So, Um, But, you know, Tim, I always have a tough time making it here by 532, and this is my house, so I understand completely. So uh, it can be quite a challenge to be on time for... For, uh, for the live show. And that's okay, guys. We're just glad that you made it. So that's right. what it comes down to. Or if you're watching a really long Avenger movie. That's right, you're, exactly. You're like sweating it if it's even going to be done in time after you've been there all afternoon. Exactly. I didn't think you were going to make it because you said you were going to see it this afternoon. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to delay the live show because I figured it was so long. One, but 1.30. There you, oh, one, there you go. You got out just in time. So literally, you go in in the afternoon and it's night. Right. You go in in the in at in the morning and it's it's lunchtime. I mean, right. it's just it's crazy. So you get very your long mind movie. For us out of that oh, absolutely. So there you go. 
Okay, Tim, let us move on to Ben's question. And Ben writes, and Tim, I have a picture here. Don't you love those pictures? Yes. So I have, I'm having trouble getting my pole position screen to sync. Yes. I recently <laughs> bought a working board set and the screen looks like the picture attached. Game plays and sound sounds work fine, just the picture is off. I tried to adjust vertical and horizontal holds, but it doesn't help. Thank you for your help, Ben. Well, Tim, looking at that picture, I would definitely say here that Ben has a sync issue. There's I no doubt so. about that. So what is going on now? He's trying to adjust the holds, Tim, on his monitor, but when your sync is this out of whack, yeah, a it's lot of times it's not. A, I about to say, a lot of times it's not necessarily a hold issue. It's probably something else. Right, so, Tim. What do you got here for Ben? Well, it definitely is out of sync, like you said, but it's probably more or less the pins on his monitor chats or something either are loose or not hooked up correctly. He didn't say if this started to happen or if he bought it like that. Uh, that that might would help a little bit, but at the same time, well, what he does say is he sent the boards off for repair. Okay. Okay. Didn't he say that? Hang on a second. I gotta do that. I gotta double check just to make sure. He oh, he got a working board set. So okay. he had he had a cabinet. Maybe right. He had a so bad he, board didn't, set. he didn't know what it looked like. Right. Probably because it wasn't working. Exactly. But he put a new board set, working board set in that he bought, and now it's giving him the out of sync. And it sounds like everything's working with it. It's right. just out of sync. He, the fact that he can hear it play and he's able to play the game, we do tend to think, okay, it must be in the monitor. So it might be that it just needs. Um, I think you put in the sh in the notes that it's composite sync, negative sync, and he may just have be one pin off, or he might need to combine his wires to make sure that it's it is getting that composite or negative sync that it requires. Right. So you need to because here's the deal, guys. This is what is confusing, especially to a newer guy. And I, I may be speaking to half the audience here, or no, none of the audience, but maybe in the future audience that's watching, just because you have a certain game, you have to understand how that game sends out a signal, and then every monitor is different. Right. So that board might have worked great in test, but when he puts it in his game, it's not working because he's got a different monitor than the guy testing the mon sure. game. So different monitors require different types of sync. So you got to find out what your game puts out and what your monitor that your particular monitor requires. And those two are probably are not matching up. If he can get them two to match up, everything should be fine. And Tim, I think you're right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this up here real quick. Yes, definitely looks like a sync issue. We recommend starting off this repair by making sure that your sync is connected to the correct pins on your monitor chassis. Pole position uses composite negative sync. Tim, we've heard composite negative sync. Jamma games use right. a lot of composite negative sync. So you may need to split the wires if your monitor chassis has pins for negative horizontal and vertical sync separately. And Tim, we've talked about this in our video on replacing an arcade monitor and the fact that sometimes you have to split a sync right. and hook it up to your to your monitor chassis. Sometimes you have to combine two syncs Correct. to put it on your yeah, monitor that chassis. That video definitely will help. And we explain it maybe a little bit better and show some actual sync issues and how we fix it. Right. And not only that, though, the real Bob Roberts.net, which I didn't put on the slide, has a great article on syncing that you should check out. And I can't remember what the URL is right now, but the real Bob Roberts.net, there's a nice a nice article he has on there, Tim, about mm -hmm. dealing with different syncs. And we would recommend that for you as well. Now, Tim, you may have your syncs all hooked up correctly. OK. Right. And so if you do, then you could have a power issue. Your B plus voltage, Tim, we have seen this when your B plus voltage gets out of whack, basically it makes it impossible to sync. That is true. Because if you're, let's say your B plus voltage is low, but getting enough to output a picture, right? you may not be able to sync it properly. Okay. So you do want to check your B plus voltage on the monitor. Now, Tim, a lot of monitors use 120 volts uh, for their B plus, but not every monitor. So make sure you look up your particular monitor chassis to see what voltage your B plus voltage should be. Sometimes it's 110. I think on Sanyo's it's 100, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so different B-plus voltages for different monitor chassis. A lot of them are 120, but make sure that your B-plus voltage is dialed in as well. Tim, we talked a lot about B-plus voltage tonight, but it can definitely cause sync issues like the one you're you're having here. So, Ben, hopefully answers your question, and good luck getting that pole position monitor synced properly. Okay, let us continue on here, Tim. Oh, Matty Moe's Arcade's here. I just saw that. And, uh, Tim, it looks like we have uh, Jason and Matty Moe have not seen Avengers. Okay, we won't spoil anything. We won't spoil anything. Did I spoil anything for you? No. I posted some spoilers yeah. to Tim about Avengers. Did they, I spoil it? Made them? no sense. Okay, now so they make sense. They're, they're funny. spoilers. They were. 
Context clues. Context clues, yeah. Maybe okay. we'll talk about that in the All right, show. maybe so. Maybe, mm-hmm. we'll see. But anyway, um, no, but no no spoilers. No, no spoilers. No spoilers. So there you go. Um, but Tim, it looks like, oh, John, chime back in. Here's an arcade debate topic. Release prototype ROMs in MAME or not? That you would think like that, a great arcade you topic. You would think that John wrote our outline. <laughs> great, great point. Guess what's coming up? Here in a bit. Teaser. We're going to be getting to that. So anyway. Tim, let us move on to YouTube questions. Tim, we had two that I just wanted to cover real quickly okay. here. One is from Wood Berry Garden. Okay. Is that right? Wood Berry Garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, in your video on drilling holes in plexiglass, I can't tell if the plastic film is on the bottom or the top where the bit starts. And then Rodney says, in your video on repairing joystick switch issues, I missed what the different joystick types are called. So, Tim, let's take Wood Berry Garden's question here first. Drilling holes in plexiglass. Right. Did we start with the plastic film on the bottom or the top where where the bit started? Uh, the the film is usually on the bottom and the top. Right. We usually so, have it on both. The, the um, plexi that we buy usually has it on both sides. Right. And we like to keep it on. Yes. And it makes a difference. I have tried to cut it. With the whole saw, with it off, and with the plastic on, it definitely cuts better with the plastic on. I've seen uh, guys that do this a lot more than me. A lot of times we'll take a, it, if, let's say it was an older piece of plexiglass, they'll take a piece of masking tape and put over it and then drill the hole. Yeah. So some about that helps keep that from cracking, so I would definitely recommend doing that. And so and if you've only got one side of plastic, and Tim, use the plastic use side. Use the plastic side. That's what I was going to say. So if you've only got one side that's covered in the plastic when you get your plexiglass, use that side to drill your holes. There's just something about it, like Tim mentioned, and I'm sure there's some physics explanation right. for this that we don't we're not entitled to or anything or we don't know but um, i will say that it does seem to cut a lot better when you i was knowing stuff time. works or doesn't work. <laughs> exactly and that works Simple. that's what we know um and then rodney was like okay so in our video on repairing joystick switch issues we talk about different types of joysticks we covered two types of joysticks but there's actually another type as well right what were the two that we covered in that video Do we you talked remember, about leaf switch joysticks which are really the older the game the more you see those I uh, think of original Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man had a leaf style, so did Galaga. Um, a lot of pinball machines have those type still, of switches. A lot of, a lot of pinball machines still use leaf and, switches. And uh, people like those type of switches. Then what we see more of the fighting games, once you get into that era, you see more of a micro switch or we say cherry switch a lot of times. Main brand is cherry um, on the micro switch. Right, obviously. a micro switch based. And then one that we don't talk about and we haven't shot a video on, you do have a few games uh, Blitz was one of them I remember was real popular with a opto base or uh, electronic type switch. Right. And, you know, you can actually buy four-way joysticks that work in fighting games mm-hmm. that are optical based. I right. mean, so, I mean, Blitz is one that comes to mind because Blitz also has a breakout board mm-hmm. for the optical joysticks. And so each joystick has more than four wires. I think okay. it has eight pair or something like that. And so those connectors are wider for each joystick. And then you actually have an optical board, an opto board that actually translates those for the game. So, I mean, optical based joysticks, there are quite a few out there. We've seen them in, I mean, obviously NFL Blitz, but we've also seen them in games, Tim, like I said, regular fighting games where people have replaced right. their sure. micro switch ones with the optical. We don't talk about that in that one because really micro switch and leaf are probably the most common ones that we see. Way more common. Yeah. So, I mean, even like the Sanwa joysticks that a lot of you guys like are micro switch based, mm-hmm. you know, so it's not like, it's not like um, they're not using them anymore. They're still using micro switch joy- uh, joysticks quite a bit and still probably the most common by what we see. Probably so. So. So I'll go ahead and throw it up here, Tim, since we got the outline here. Uh, let's see. The plexiglass that we buy usually has plastic film on both sides. We recommend leaving that film on while you're drilling the holes in your plexiglass. The step drill bit will also work without the film, but we found that you're less likely to crack the plexiglass if the protective film is still on it. Tim mentioned putting a piece of masking tape over the place where you're going to drill the holes, um, as that also will help with the cracking issues. Yes. So, and it really depends on what kind of plexiglass you buy. They have like the super industrial plexiglass right. that it doesn't crack at all. And then they, they have the cheap stuff that we buy. So, <laughs> <laughs> because we don't Lexan like a is a little bit more uh, is tougher and it doesn't crack as bad, but it is a little bit more expensive. Right. Um, for Rodney, again, micro switch leaf base, but optical. And Tim, this is a this joystick here is actually a blitz style joystick. Yes. Um, just to give you an idea, that has the forty nine way component, optical sensors in it. So those are less common, but they're still out there, and it's something we didn't talk about in that video. Correct. So, there you go. Okay, there we go. Okay, Tim, um, we're getting too close to your tech tip, but we have a couple of questions over here real quick. So um, let's see. What kind of joystick did Berserk use? I can't think off the top of my head. It may have been optical base. 
Berserk had... Berserk. You got to look it up for us? I'm going to try to look that up real okay. quick because well, I the, think it was a... Um, while you're doing that, Michael says, what can cause jail bars on monitors? It really depends cap. on what you mean mm-hmm. by jail bars. Now, it can be caps. It can be that you have your flyback brightness turned up too high instead of your main chassis uh, brightness turned up. Uh, that can cause that as well. Sometimes people mistake jail bars for graphic glitches. If you're having a graphic glitch, then it's probably a board issue. But if you're having like the standard raster jail bar pattern, Tim, a lot of times it could be an issue with caps or brightness on your flyback monitor chassis that can cause that being turned up a little bit too high. Um, So we always recommend starting with turning down the brightness to see if you can get rid of those jail bars. And if you can't, then you may try a cap kit and a flyback replacement to see if that helps the issue. So, yeah, turning down flyback first. And that's, and Delusional says that, too. Flyback first is usually what causes jail, jail uh, bars, like we mentioned. A lot of times we see that where the flyback brightness is too high and the chassis brightness is too low. We'll see that a lot in that. So, what kind of oil do you use on trackball bearings? Three, three in one. one. Three in one oil. We've, we've recommended that for a, a long time. And I think it even works on the Arcade 1-Up trackballs as well, Tim. I think I used it on mine. It worked really well. Three in one oil. You can get it from Amazon or your local hardware store. Um, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty good stuff and works pretty easily. So. See, I was thinking, KLV doesn't list Berserk as having a specific style joystick. I think they were just a, a, a I think they were switch, a leaf, leaf switch, switch base. base. You could check out... Um, I was going to say you could check out the um, the, mon- the uh, manual. Yeah. You probably have it in there. But I'll look that up. Why don't you do your tech tip for us here? All right. Tim? Let's go into our tech tip tonight. Okay. And uh, just something really simple that, you know, a lot of guys have talked about. What am I going to do? You know, I, I, we're starting to really see some of these arcade one ups. They're showing up at trade shows, they're showing up cheap on Craigslist and different places. And a lot of people have talked about how to mod these and uh, what to do. Well, our friends at Retro Arcade Store have come up with a kit that they sell for that to change it to a 60 and one So that definitely helps. Uh, is that that one there? Oh, uh, no. Th- I found the... Um, uh, we can come out real quick. So Berserk does have an opto board. Oh, it does have an opto so board. So it, it does have an opto board. It so would make it, sense the way that it moves. It moves a little bit different. Exactly. I was thinking it was optical. So technically Berserk is an optical joystick. So okay. it uses an opto board to d- determine... Oh, yes. I remember w- working on a Berserk now a long time ago. But yes, it is an optical board. And uh, it's it's kind of like a... Um, it's, very, it's very similar to a pinball... Uh, what you score like when it goes down a hole or something right that those type what they do is they have a sensor over here a sensor over here usually a sensor here and a sensor here, like four infrared. sensors infrared right. and a lot of times uh, they have to be lined up and as you break that break um, those lines yeah and that's how it does usually I, I remember the joystick now had a, like a really silver part on it. it had to be really shiny uh, and sometimes if it wasn't working right, if those got dirty or whatever, they wouldn't read right. So um, it needs to be clean and shiny. I'm pretty sure you're right. It's optical. Okay, sorry to interrupt. But anyway, back to the uh, the do-it-yourself retro arcade store uh, is now selling a kit that you can buy that basically gives you uh, more arcade quality parts and a 60-in-1 board. It talks about how to convert it. So if... Um, you have access or you've got the RK one up and you've been thinking about doing this. I think that this is a great, and what a great idea. They automatically came up with a kit that you can auto can purchase and put a little bit higher quality parts in there. Now we should mention like cheap. the, the 16 one kit that's over there, um, that you really have to have one of the vertical mounted arcade right. one-ups you because one. it's vertical game so you're going to have to use a vertical cannon so the just, pac-man the galaga yeah. vertical centipede um let's just see. like if you were converting any arcade game exactly it's not necessary but it does look a little better otherwise you'd have to physically rotate the monitor right which is what you don't want to do or you just so. get a really squished screen which right. doesn't look right well i think it actually displays sideways oh wow because of the way it. the rotation works so okay. yeah so just like you'd have with a 16 one if you try to fit a horizontal game kind of thing so, but Tim, I think one of the coolest things that they sell are those custom Overlays. control panels. Those yeah. are actual, like you replace that whole wood piece with wow. those. So like, um, it's not just the artwork, it's actually the wood piece on there. And now John, have you priced these? Are they pretty reasonable? Uh, yeah, I think the panels are like $60 before shipping. It's not too bad. With the artwork already on them wow. and T-molded. 
Wow. So, I mean, just looking at them. And, of course, Tim, they sell the Sanwa joysticks and the, the arcade quality buttons, which, you know, you've mentioned in the past some of the controls in the arcade one up are not quite up to, like, arcade quality. Right. So, for those of you guys who want that experience, they offer parts for that. So, I mean, yeah. and, the, and they're pretty reasonably priced, but, Tim, they have an entire section just for arcade one up upgrades. So, I mean, it makes it really easy for those of you guys who have arcade one ups who want to upgrade. Tim, I should mention before we go on, a couple of things about arcade one up. I got another arcade one up cabinet you for did. my birthday. I got the Street Fighter one. Okay. It's sitting over here in a box. I haven't put it together yet. Okay. But uh, I did get the Street Fighter 2 one. Uh, my wife was nice enough to get that for my birthday. So kind of cool looking. Yeah. Um, and they did just release three new cabinets. The Final Fight, which you got to see right. when you went on your trip there, is now available. You can okay. buy them in the stores now. Um, the Mortal Kombat okay. 2 that plays Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 right. is now available. And then the Golden T, Tim, which you mentioned you may be interested I in. I might be interested in that. Is also now available. Available. The cool thing about the Golden Tee is that it has a riser right. and it has a lighted marquee. Yeah. So it's very cool. And I'm sure, Tim, that was all done with licensing and permission from Incredible Technologies. So, so. Because they own all that kind of stuff. But, um, uh, Tim, I, I still think that Arcade 1-Ups are a great deal for you guys who, you know, don't necessarily either have the room for a full-size cabinet or don't want to spend all the money on one, whatever the case may be, or fixing one up. And I uh, hope that you guys who have them are, are enjoying them. Um, I enjoy my, uh, you know, night, or what is it that I have here? 12-in-1. I enjoy the 12-in-1 quite a bit. We still play it quite a bit. Um, and I'm looking forward to putting together my Street Fighter 2. Maybe yeah. I'll mod the Street Fighter 2. It's kind of... I feel like Street Fighter 2 is kind of made for modding. I'm you know? wondering about that. Would, yeah. would I don't guess anybody would care since they bought it for your birthday. Exactly. Maybe that'd be a great video for us to get the kit and show how to mod it. Maybe. So right now it's in the box. I need to put it together. So there you go. But Tim, thanks for that tech tip. Thanks for letting us know about all the cool arcade one-up mod stuff. So uh, again, do it yourself. Uh, RetroArcade.com, right? Yes. Yes, there we go. So... Okay, Tim, let's see what else we have here. My Gorf um, Mini has an optical Tron style joystick. Crazy setup. Yeah, we've seen that. that is I was crazy. about to say, yeah, we've seen a lot of those that had the optical style. Um, let's see, Golden T was smart. They should sell well. Yeah, I think the Golden T for the Arc of One Ups is going to sell well. Tim's yeah. even talking about buying one, for goodness sake. <laughs> so, Edward says, hello, guys. Hello, Edward. Thanks for being here. We always, I just like to throw hellos to people. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with I that. I think it's cool when somebody posts where they're from. We had somebody from New Hampshire yeah, earlier. Yeah, New Hampshire earlier. That was pretty, that's a pretty far piece from We got a lot of Texas people here, Texas, which we yeah. appreciate too. So I saw Maddie Moe was here, and we're going to have to talk about our Stars versus Blues, um, uh, you know, thing in the after show, Tim. Okay. Because, you know, I know mm -hmm. Matt, I know that you're a big uh, St. Louis Blues fan, and we're big Stars fans, right, Tim? Right. So we got a little rivalry going on. We'll discuss that in the after show. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, Tim, before we get too far, let us continue on to some news stories. And the first one we have here is, did a vigilante ROM leaker go too far to preserve a lost Atari ROM? Okay, now this was posted on our Facebook page by Louie. Louie did a good job with this. I posted the one right before it that had a lot of detail about the story as well. Um, I guess you could say great minds think alike. We both posted the story about the same time. But what we need to go ahead and say here is that uh, basically what's happened, guys, is that the ROMs have been dumped for a prototype Atari game, Aka-R, which I hope I'm saying that correctly. Mm -hmm. But there's some controversy over how this happened. Now, Tim, the story goes that an arcade tech copied the ROMs without permission while he was at a collector's house repairing some of his other games. Okay, so basically what happened is that this collector invited an arcade tech to his house to right. fix some games, but the arcade tech decided while he was fixing games that he would bust into this Arca R cabinet, take the ROMs out, copy them, and put them back in. That's a and pretty, release them. That's a pretty far-fetched story. Yeah, and so... Well, we may not necessarily know if the story is true or false, Tim. I think the concept is very interesting, right? It could happen. It could have happened. It could have happened. So the question is, is it okay for an arcade tech to copy ROM images off of boards that they are working on, period? Like, would we ever do this? And so, Tim, that is what we are going to debate tonight. All right. Is it okay for an arcade tech to copy ROM images off boards that they're working on? Or maybe even boards that they're just nearby <laughs> in this particular case. But um, I think that this is kind of the most appealing part of this story is that, you know, did, did this guy overstep his bounds? Now, in this particular case, since he wasn't working on the game, he may have. Right. But let's say he was tasked with working this game. Right. Working on this game. To fix it. Exactly. He was let's tasked to fix it. they send it in for repair. Right, exactly. So this guy comes out to fix the Arca R. Would it be okay for him to copy the ROM images off of it? So, Tim, that is where we're going to be tonight. And so, boom, here we are. We are in the arcade debate segment for tonight, guys. And we're going to take a minute here, reset, and come right back. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Arcade Debate segment for tonight. Now, Tim, you may have heard about the recent controversy surrounding the ROMs for a rare Atari prototype game called Arca R, okay? And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay. I'm not for sure. But basically, the, as the story goes, is that a repair guy that was tasked with repairing a different game for a collector decided that while he was there, he would copy the ROMs for Arca R and distribute them on the internet. Now, Tim, we're not necessarily going to deal directly with that controversy, but the question we're going to pose tonight is, is it okay for an arcade tech to copy the ROMs off any board that they're working on. So like, let's say you were working on a board. Is it okay for you to copy those ROM files off of that board? So Tim, what is your position? Would it be okay for you to do that? I'm gonna say no, based on the fact that, um, w especially without any kind of permission, you always, you're there to repair something else uh, to basically, it's kind of a version of stealing in my opinion. What is What do you say, Jonathan? So here's the deal, Tim. I would say that this is okay to an extent, and let me explain what that extent is. So if, now, again, now, I don't think it was right for him to break into a different game while he was working on this game. That's a different, a totally different argument entirely. But let's say he was tasked with repairing the Arca R arcade cabinet. He, he determined it was a board, maybe a board problem. He brought it back to his bench. Would it not be okay for him to copy the ROMs, especially knowing that this game is a prototype, to keep those ROMs stored just in case something happened to the ROMs later on down the road? I don't disagree that it's probably a good idea to do that. It's just the dishonesty part in not telling them that you did that. And that's what the article basically said, is they don't know how they got out there that this is might or could have what what one of them thinks happened because they have no idea how it got off. I think as long as they're upfront and honest about it, that it would be okay. But, um, you know, there's comes, there's a fine line between if somebody wants to protect their personal property, just because I come, it's like I'm working on your refrigerator. I don't have a good right to go fix myself a sandwich unless you offer it. And I think some of that is, uh, just being a little bit on the dishonesty side but I know you're talking about when it comes to pre preserving these games, uh, they shouldn't be stingy with them either. And I know that's where you're coming from, John. What do you you... Well, well, really what it comes down to, Tim, is I think it would have been okay for the arcade tech to copy the ROM files, but I think where you cross the line is in distribution. Right. Um, I wouldn't say that it would be okay for a tech to distribute those, okay? So, like, let's say that I'm working on this board, I copy the ROM files, I would keep them private just hold on to them basically in case those ROMs ever died on that board, okay? Right. And so then I could rewrite a new ROM and then put it on the board and we'd be fine. When you cross the line over into distribution where you're actually putting them out on the internet, I think at that point is when you cross the line. And like you mentioned, really should have probably checked with the collector in either case, okay? But I think when you start to distribute, you definitely should have asked permission in that. But is it okay for an arcade tech to just copy the ROMs off of a board? I think so, but when you... When you get into distribution of those ROMs, I think is when things get a little muddy. Does that make sense? I think so, and I think you're right, John. I think another th person we have to ask ourselves, though, is what about a person says, I, if you had a rare game, we're, we're talking about one that only three exist, that doesn't want that game in domain. Uh, maybe the, the debate can switch here just a little bit, Jonathan. What about those operators? It's almost like a hoarding. Why wouldn't they want that? ROM out? Why wouldn't they want to release it into my well, And I see this side of the argument too, Tim, that they think it will devalue the games, right? So like if, let's say Arca R is now playable in MAME, they feel like that their original games, their original cabinets may not be worth as much now that it's playable in MAME. I would argue the opposite though. I would say the fact that it actually is available in MAME will make that game more desirable because people will have played it. Tim, how many games did we play in MAME right. where we played in MAME first then we went and found the cabinet exactly. because we, we liked it. We liked this game and it was fun to play. And then we went and sought out the game in particular. And I think you're right there too, Jonathan. And maybe we're agreeing more than we're debating this time. <laughs> but that's okay because we're we're talking about, you know, is it okay? Well, at some point, um, everybody, you got that rare piece that everybody wants to know and wants to play. I don't think it'll affect the value at all. I think you're right. I think that the value should stay because 
what really people want. It's one thing to play at MAME and just know how the game plays, but that's not how the game plays. It's like playing Tron in MAME. It's not the same as playing it on a Tron machine. Exactly, and I think people realize that, Tim, that there's a huge difference between emulation and playing the game on a cabinet as it, is, as it was intended. And I think in this particular case, I don't think that it will devalue the cabinets, but I think that there are collectors, especially collectors of rare pieces like this, that are worried that their game may not be worth as much if it's available in MAME. I would say that that's probably an unfounded worry in my personal opinion, but I can see that argument. I can definitely see that side of it. And who's to say that this didn't happen years ago? They're not the original owners. They didn't work for Atari back in the day. Right. These guys have bought it. Evidently, the games have switched hands several times. So who's to say that this guy actually was the tech that came and worked on it? Could have been any of the previous owners. Could have saved a raw man image. It'd be really hard for an arcade repair tech to burn an image and do all that while he's sitting there on your clock and on your dime. If he did, shame on him. I was about to say, though, I mean, you think about this, though, too, Tim. I mean, it would be a lot easier if you took the board off-site to do that kind of stuff. For Doing sure. it on-site is very difficult. You'd have to have a laptop with ROM burning imaging software and, and a ROM imager and all that kind of stuff. That's a lot of stuff to haul around with you. I think if I saw my arcade tech coming in with that stuff, I'd be a little suspicious already. But at the same time, like we talked about, if, if I was tasked with fixing the board and I had the board on my bench already and I knew it was a rare game, I may copy those ROMs just so I have a copy in case that collector's a game dies at some point. And my only Distri distribution is different, though. And my, say that. my only difference with that would be as long as you let the owner know, look, I'm going to copy these ROMs. I think on a regular game, it makes a total sense. But obvious, if they're proprietary with that rare game and there, it is their property, it is their right. I think as long as you're upfront and honest about it and let them know what you're doing, I don't have a problem with it. It's the underhandedness. Did he really sneakily, basically, steal them? and then distribute them would be the question. And I'm with you, Tim. And so we're going to leave it at that. But what do you guys say? If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment below and let us know what you think. What's your opinion on this issue? Or if you're watching this on Facebook or Twitter, please leave a comment, send us back a reply, and let us know. We want to thank you for joining us for the Arcade Debate segment for tonight, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Are we done? Can I get out of the square now? Yeah. Golly. I was kind of floating out of the square. <laughs> that was actually a hard one to debate because we both have strong opinions both on both sides. Exactly. We get it. Right. I get it that I, I, I would want to play it. Sure. I think it's cool. I mean, I want to play, and I'll probably play it and probably boring. But, you know, it's like, oh, well. It's a piece of gaming history, though. But it, it really is, is a little. And what if, ha what if uh, uh, you know, here in Texas, gosh, we just had these tornadoes come through. What if something happens and they get destroyed? And then nobody can play it. Exactly. And so I think part of that says that uh, collectors should be open to do that and leave and would want those out there. But uh, but then again, you've got to go through the right channels, the right things. Don't be sneaky and underhanded. But something about the story just doesn't add up. Just doesn't Great. seem that possible that somebody could do that or even would do that. And uh, if, if they did do that, maybe this would make a great movie. I don't know. There you go. So, the great Arca R heist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If anybody has any personal information, and in, in, if you haven't read the article yet, the article does go into a little bit of conspiracy and a little bit of, uh, you know, trying to track down who was the original poster. And it's kind of like uh, guys that watch the after show, we won't, we won't go too much further. Maybe we'll talk about it more in the after show. I like crime dramas. And one thing I've learned that if people, if there's anybody that hangs around and asks a lot of questions about the dr the crime, they're a lot jumping. of times they're connected. <laughs> yeah. It's like they, they're drawn back. They can't quit talking about it. They want the recognition. They want the name in the paper. And for somebody to keep bringing it up that this happened, it like makes you wonder, how how do you know, you know so much about it? Anyway, we'll go. leave that to the everybody else to debate. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and go to the live chat, see what the live chat was thinking here, Tim. We had, uh, Edward said he was from Alabama. You're oh. asking for people to say where they were Thank from. Thank you, so Edward. There you go, Alabama. Thanks for joining us. Um, Jason says, Northeast Louisiana. So there we go. So, okay, so let's get down to what we we're talking about. Maddie Moe says, I highly doubt a tech did this on the down low. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Um, YouTube Punk says, save the ROMs. It belongs in a museum. Museum equals internet. Yeah. <laughs> so right. there you go. Um, let's see. John says, looking forward to more prototype ROMs. And yeah, you see, here's the deal, guys, is that 
these were games like Arca R were not released. Right. And so the only time that people have ever got to play them is now in May. The only time that anybody's gotten to play Arca R, except for the times that collectors have taken them out for festivals. And right. Things. Like California Extreme or exactly, something. Exactly. Right. Really so, rare. I mean, the fact that you now get to play it, I think, is great. Um, if this story is true, I think this guy did wrong. I'm with right. you. Again, distribution's one thing. If he would have kept the ROMs on his hard drive and just said, I'm going to keep a backup of them just in case, I think that's different. But it's kind of like. Uh, he did it, but are we really that upset that he did it? Right. We don't. We don't think it's like it's a Robin Hood thing, right? Yeah, it's kind of Robin Hood. It's like right. we, from we agree that it wasn't right? the best thing, but we're kind of almost glad that the ROMs are out there too. So that's kind of where we are with the debate. And uh, I think you guys could like somebody come up with a cure for cancer and stole it. Right. I really wouldn't care if it was curing cancer, but they shouldn't steal it. Right. They should. Then that drug company would make all that money. You know? Right. Whatever the case may be. But anyway. Something like that. Jason says, everything gets out eventually. Hands change over time. And that's true. I mean, but the problem with ROM chips, guys, is that they're dying off. Right. There's... They were never meant to last as long as they are. So, I mean, if you don't rip them now, when are you going to rip and them? And a, a high chance of when you're ripping them that you could destroy, those you could, could destroy be damaged. Them. Absolutely. So... I can kind of see why the collector of the rare game is like, I don't know if I really want you doing this. Right. Seems like there would be a way, though, to do it safely as possible or the best. So what if you asked the collector and he said no well, like for distribution? Then you would have do to do, then I have to abide by his rules. He's the one paying me to do his job. Sure. I always respect people's wishes that are giving me money. Exactly. I'm there to do what they're asked to do, but I, I, I wouldn't be above asking. Sure. YouTube Punk says, Angel on my shoulder says, be honest, don't steal. The little <laughs> devil on my shoulder says, someone, glad someone did it. So yeah, kind of in that boat with you. Right. Um, John says, Marble Madness 2, two-player missile command. Yeah, both those we'd like to see if those are prototypes out there. Um, let's see. Geek, Lights, uh, Geek Light says, St. Pete, Florida. And oh. he's not, not upset at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, Jason says, the original cabinets of these games provide the true experience that we remember, not the ROMs. And that's exactly correct. Um, a emulated version of a game can never change the true experience of the game because tim the experience is more than just the controls right. even it's the artwork and that's it's the, it's the screen it's and the, that's you know, what would like make that. me uh about uh, let's say it's a rare game well there's something that people collect rare games they bring a lot of value but when they're so rare like the game spider somebody in the chat room or us has played that before right now it's rare but at least it's something you remember playing when a game like that i don't even know what it does i don't remember what it playing that doesn't make a lot of value to me the games that are valuable to me are the Omega Race and those things that I used to play that sure. I never find anymore. Right. So there you go. Well, I think we're caught up here, Tim, but a lot of good discussion on that topic. I still think it's an interesting topic. It is. And if you guys have any more discussion about that as we go on with the show, please let us know. Now, Tim, there's another controversy that went on, and it's right. surrounding this Capcom home arcade stick. Have you heard about this thing? Yes. So um, Capcom is releasing a plug-and-play arcade stick that contains 16 classic games. Is that the picture of it? That's that what it looks picture. like. That is the picture. It looks it's like the Capcom different. logo, and it's got the it's got the uh, six buttons, and it's got two San Juan joysticks on the okay. other side. Um, it's going to come with Street Fighter 2, of course, Dark Stalkers, uh, Strider, Aliens vs. Predator is a big one, and Super Puzzle Fighter Turbo, among others. It features Sanwa parts and Wi-Fi for leaderboards, for okay. high-score leaderboards, which is really cool. It's expected to be released in October and cost around $250. But, Tim, people... What's the controversy? The controversy the is price? that it uses emulation, okay? No. But the emulator is a, is a free emulator, but the manufacturer of this went to the emulator maker and said, hey, we want to license it for use in our product. And the emulator lead guy said yes. But the problem was is there's a lot of people who have contributed to this project over time right. that didn't realize that their code was ever going to be used in a commercial environment. Gotcha. And they're mad because they had been contributing to this free of charge their own time. And the only one who's getting paid basically is the lead guy. None of the rest of them are getting paid, right? Okay. And not only that, but the license was specifically stated it was only supposed to be, you know, basically free. You know, right. a free use license. So there's a lot of controversy. A lot of developers who contributed code to this are very unhappy that now their project is going to be in a commercial product. Okay. But really, the reason why Capcom had to do this, Tim, is because have you seen all the Pandora's box joysticks? Yes. This is, in my opinion, this is Capcom trying to fight those. Right. Okay, because there's been a lot of those Pandora's box joysticks, Tim, where it, you know, it has a Pandora's box in it and it's two joysticks hooked up to your TV. This is what this thing is basically the legal version of. Okay, and so this is Capcom saying, guess what? We offer a product like that now, so we're going to shut down any sellers that are selling the bootleg. And 
is it me or does the price seem really expensive? Two fifty. I mean, for sixteen games. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's what the Pandora's box ones go for. But of course, the Pandora's box ones play like four hundred games. Right. So I mean, I wouldn't say it's necessarily overpriced for something legal because okay. it's the same price, less games, same price, but yeah, but you're the legal. Nintendo one is ninety dollars. Now this thing has Wi-Fi in it. Okay. And upload your high scores to like a high score leaderboard. That's kind of cool. And it may end up having like Wi-Fi multiplayer network co-op. Now that would be fun. So I mean, there that may be some other things coming, right? There may be some other things coming with it. We don't know all the details about it. We know it has high score leaderboards for sure over that, which right. is something that you don't see. So there's some benefits there. It is. I do think you like you. It's a little pricey for what it is. But Tim, as we know, retro gaming is an all-time high right now, and True. so people are willing to pay for some of these things to so. the roof because of it. So. There you go. But so there has been some controversy around it, but I think it's interesting and I think it's going to be an interesting product. If any of you guys end up buying it, let us know. Uh, it gives you a review on it. I want to know. I'm curious yes. to see. So. Okay, Tim. So last month we talked about a pinball machine release. Yes. I believe that was Black Knight by Stern. We right. even debated it. Right. <laughs> but um, this month we have another new pinball machine release, and it's from Jersey Jack, and it's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Tim. And you can see the PR release from Jersey Jack uh, at that link there, Tim. It's designed by Pat Lawler, just like um, Dialed In was. And, uh, of course, we talked about Found House earlier, um, Monopoly, Twilight Zone, so many uh, uh, Adam's Family, so many great, um, you know, different Pat Lawler games. So, um, you know, it's just amazing to see another one here. And Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory really seems like it's a game that's right up Jersey Jack's It does. Alley, especially right. with uh, Wizard of Oz and some of the other ones. So, But um, it features uh, four flippers, six balls, a captive ball, seven magnets, an everlasting gobstopper, the most secret machine, Oompa Loompa camera sculpture, seven inch Wonka Vision LCD, a 27 inch HD LCD screen, and a candy colored LED light show. And that's in just the standard model. Wow. So, um, and every model has those things. So the price starts at seventy five hundred for the standard edition, Tim. Which that's the picture of the cabinet. The only complaint that I have, Tim, is that the standard edition cabinet looks and artwork looks really plain. Okay. And when you bump up to the premium and the limited, looks way different. Way better. And so it, it really makes me think that, like, the standard people got really shafted on just the artwork. Because it seems like artwork would be something that's just kind of trivial, right? Right. But maybe that's a good way to do it in order to keep the pricing, you know, in, in line with maybe everything. So. I have no idea. But um, I do love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, so I'm looking forward to actually playing this. Hopefully I get to play it. So you're a Willy Wonka fan. I'm a huge Willy too. Wonka fan. I love that I movie. like everybody except for the old grandpa guy. You know why? Why? Because the dude's family's about to starve and everything. He's all up in bed like can't move. Then you tell him he's going to the chocolate factory. Homeboy hops up out of bed and he's ready to go. Hey, think about this for a second, though. You need to hop on down the 7 Only six and get people got to go into that chocolate factory, <laughs> Tim. Okay? If you had an opportunity to be one of six people to go someplace, would you hop out of bed and do it? I'm uh, just saying. He should have hopped up and got a job at 7 Eleven and bought some groceries. I'm just saying. Because, you know, back then there were a lot of 7 Elevens <laughs> on every corner and everything, right? So, no, but... I, I think it's a great theme. Uh, definitely fits the Jersey Jack kind of. When I See, heard, we're, we're starting another did, arcade debate. I didn't did, mean yeah. There you go. But uh, no, it's funny uh, that I bet it's a fun game. And and for those who played it, what were their opinions of it? Yeah, John? I've seen a lot of video of it, but I, you know, video to me doesn't mean much. Like when I'm watching, it, I'm like, yeah, I understand. It's hard to, I get the rules. I see the shots and everything. It, I mean, the play field looks great. And I had a picture of part of the play field there on the on the slide. Uh -huh. I mean, all the artwork looks fantastic. The music sounds good. I mean, everything about it looks good. But Tim, I'm, I'm to a point now where I really have to play it before I'm going to give like an actual opinion. And the and the real original Willy Wonka too, not Johnny Depp or yes. nothing like that. Thankfully, thank yes. you, thank you. Yes, yeah, thank exactly. You. So there we're you both go. very grateful for that. So there What's we going go. on in the chat. Uh, Joshua says, "I'll be honest. When I heard about this one, I was very bummed. Then I watched the interview video with Pat Lawler, and gracious, that game looks fun, and it does look fun. And that's why I'm going to say the artwork looks great. It looks like a fun game. But I'm going to reserve all judgments until I play it. So we're going to wait. Hopefully, we'll get to play it at some point, Tim. Yeah, um, if so. it's I mean, I tell you, if it's really, really good, though, I mean, I may, I may pull the trigger. I was to say that the price point, for super a new kid friendly, friend, yeah. super kid friendly. It you know. fits your genre, exactly. kind of game room stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I I could see myself definitely pulling the trigger on something like that if it, if I like the way it plays. So yeah. I'm going to reserve judgment though until we get to play it. Hopefully, we will get to play it at some point soon. So. 
And Tim, uh, you know, every month we always ask people to submit like short videos that we can play here on the yes. live show so that we can promote their channels. For sure. And Tim, uh, Delusionals Arcade has joined us for several live shows. And finally, he emailed in and said, hey, why don't you feature one of my videos? Thank so you. that's what we're going to do today. We're going to feature one of Delusional Arcade's videos. And so, Tim, it's an arcade quickie washing his OutRun arcade monitor, and it still works. And Tim, he does exactly what we talk about he washes it with some simple green and okay. a garden hose awesome okay and he does it in this video i think the video is only about a minute and tim i put it in the monitor and screen section i call it intermediate because a beginner may not want to wash their monitor with, right. <laughs> with simple green and a garden hose but um we'll, we'll play it here in just a second but um guys if you like the stuff on our channel, we highly encourage you to visit other arcade channels, including Delusionals Arcade. And Tim, there's a YouTube link right there on the screen. And there's also one down in the show notes. So make sure that, guys, if you're here and you're liking what you uh, see with our content, that you will go to Delusionals channel, subscribe, and watch his content as well. Tim, he's got some very in-depth videos, including like a, a very long video on tube swapping. So if oh, you guys are interested awesome. in that. Um, so they've got some great information there. But Tim, we're going to go ahead and play this video of Delusionals real quick, and then we'll come right back. It's only a minute long. Back up. Come on. I'm not going to flush, okay? All right. So, I don't want the noise either. Well, I hope we're sound muted. I did mute it. <laughs> okay. Did I mute it? Yeah. Oh, this is cool. If you did mute it, it's going to have a funny outtake. Is it still going? Yeah, barely. When you see his logo come up, that's the end. And okay. the end. It's not quite the end. That's the end. Okay. Oh, we had the mic on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, okay. <laughs> had the mic on. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we go. So, um, but anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, water hose, not a power washer. Yeah, that's one of the things he said. Sorry, guys, for the audio. So, <laughs> there you go. I had to go to the restroom. But um, anyway, we'll go ahead. <laughs> that's the sound of the garden hose. There you go. Okay. So, <laughs> but anyway, so um, we got He's some. He's really fast. I am really. Oh, he is no, really he is fast. fast. Oh, no. come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, we do want to encourage you guys to subscribe to to, um, to um, Delusionals Arcade. Great information over there. And guys, we have a link down below that you guys can yeah. go to to subscribe. We love all the arcade channels, and I'm sorry that I had to talk over it. Okay, Thank you. I had to be quick with that. So Thank you, Dale. That was a really good video, though. I really, I mean, it's the way we do it. Right. It's exactly the way we do it. Sorry, you guys heard me peeing in the background. Had to <laughs> so that's what it is, you know, how, how it goes. So, yeah, we were we are live on the audio. We knew that, so sorry. <laughs> so I thought I muted it. That's my fault. So it is what it is. But um, delusional, no, I mean, great stuff there um, in that video and everything. So hopefully you guys heard all of that. And, uh, and yeah, it's a short video. And check out that video on his page as well. And like I said, he's got a lot of More great videos content there. More videos on there. Uh -huh. Absolutely. It's including a very good one on tube swapping that you should check out if you haven't nice. So there we go. Okay, so again, if you guys have any YouTube videos, so Tim, obviously... Uh, right. this, this month we featured Delusionals Arcade, but next month it could be your YouTube channel. Um, please send them to us if you guys want some free advertising. If it's arcade related, that's what we're looking for, guys. We always want to promote arcade related channel uh, channels on our YouTube channel. So uh, submit your short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade related topics. You can send a link to them at questions at arcade or .com and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Um, let's see, make sure you put a plug in for your channel so that people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. So there you go. Oh, and <laughs> YouTube Punk Arcade Repair Tips History was made tonight. There you go. I'm sorry, Delusional, that I had to go to the restroom <laughs> during your video. Uh, that was my bad. But you know, it's always fun to do that kind of stuff. You Good thing we like, didn't do all the, um, all of the, uh, Avengers spoilers. I was going to say, you, you're, you sounded like me after the Avengers. You had to go. I had I was to go. Like, I'm out. I gotta exactly. go. I had to go. So there you go. But, uh, it is what it is, guys. We do that all the time. So, yeah. I mean, you know how it is. And so. we must, we should say right now, in case we lose power that it is thundering and lightning outside and if you haven't heard anything about we might talk about storms in the after okay. show texas it is thundering and lightning so if we lose power you'll know why there you go so uh, there we go guys so tim i think we're about at the end of the show right now okay. so we'll go ahead and move forward here 
um, with our contact information. So guys, if you have any um, if you have any questions for us, please send them to our email address at questions at arcaderepairtips.com, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Put live show in the subject to get it mentioned on the show. And then uh, we also have our YouTube page. You guys are on it now, but of course uh, it's at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. Comments from the last live show will be covered on the next episode. And Tim, we do have some of those in the um, the the uh, the questions that we covered tonight. One of those yes. came from the comments section of the previous show. Just to let you guys know, we do cover those. So if you guys have something for us, make sure you leave a comment on this one. We'll cover it on the next episode. And then Tim, we have our podcast email, podcast at arcaderepairtips.com. And that goes to our friends, Eric and Rusty, who are still promising me that they're going to do a show at some point. Now, Tim, we have started to put this show on the podcast feed, just the right. main show part. So um, if you guys are listening to this on the on the podcast feed, thanks for doing that. Of course, we don't feature the after show here, but you can hear the main podcast here. But hopefully, eventually, Eric and Rusty will get out another episode. So that'll that'll be um, coming out on our iTunes page at itunes.arcaderepairtips.com and on our Stitcher radio page at stitcher.arcaderepairtips.com as well. And then we have our social media pages, guys, at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com and twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. We want to thank Louie and Mark for all of the wonderful things that they post there. Mark did an absolutely fantastic job with all the Willy Wonka stuff that he posted um, when that was released. And we also want to thank Louie for posting the Ars Technica article about Arca R that we talked about. Right. So uh, we want to thank uh, both them for all their efforts. Great information there. And we always love it when you guys interact with us on social media. Tim, it's time to move into the after show. So what are some of the things we're going to cover in the after show? I'm going to help you out. Outline. There you go. All right. Well, one thing I'm going to bring up, we may have an apprentice. Oh, an apprentice. That's a new, something new. Is that a new show? That No, we have a... Is that got the Donald Trump thing, right? We, we have a young man that has started following us locally in town, and I'll, I'll get to that in the after show. Sounds good. Now, we also talked about... We're going to uh, talk well, about our investment. Right, and you were also going to give an update on some of the changes that we talked about in the previous after show right. about, like, you were talking about all you can play and how we could work that kind of stuff in. We had a lot of comments that we wanted to cover uh, from the that we're also going to be talking about some stanley cup playoffs matt so, <laughs> All right. so um, we are going to be talking about that cord cutting update as always tv shows and movies i don't know if we'll do avengers in game spoilers no but we, we may get some context clues okay yeah okay context clues no spoilers so um but if you guys want to stay tuned for that please do if you're listening to this on audio podcast make sure you check us out on youtube and you can watch the after show there tim is there anything else you want to say before we wrap it up here for no. the main live show part thank you everybody for being in the chat room tonight and for our interactive chat thank you who watched this later who couldn't be with us live uh, we do appreciate all you guys. Thank you for continuing to send questions and come up with new ideas and things and even teaching us some things. So Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you guys for watching. And remember here at Arcade Repair Tips, when you fix the game, you, you play, play the, the game. game. Thanks for joining us. Please stay tuned for the live show. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, check out YouTube and you can see it there. Everybody have a good night. We'll see you in just a minute for the after show. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
Okay, guys, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> After show. Now, uh, Tim, I see um, a couple of things here. I see um, Go Stars. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. We're about to talk about that. Mr. Gaddy's is the best pizza place in town. Michael. Wow. There yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, Maggie Mo says... He's a little prejudiced. Stars played last night. The Blues looked flat and played a tiny bit dirty, you think? Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, YouTube Punk says, there's definitely entertainment tonight. I'm glad you're entertained. Or am I supposed to say, are you not entertained? How about right. that? There you go. But uh, it's always fun. Hey, I shouldn't have left the mic hot. That's my fault. But, you know, it's always good to get a look. I hope you guys got a good laugh out of that. So. Oh, yeah. Hey, if we you, all have to go to the bathroom never, sometime. If you've never seen our video bloopers on our about extended say, cuts. Things happen yeah. all the time. Yeah. So, in fact, there's one during the storm. I could fix this game during the, I could fix this game in the dark. That's right. And boom. There you go. So hopefully, I don't say that again. I don't want the lights to go <laughs> yeah. out. I have inter- We have internet for now. So um, we have battery backups on everything. Uh-huh. So we would lose like the main screen, but okay. I think we could still broadcast for a while. <laughs> so <laughs> as long as everything's okay. Um, it is thundering here, guys. We are in Texas and there's been quite a few storms. We've had flash floods. Right. So uh, in our particular area and at work, Tim, uh, literally in the offices that we have, we've had rain coming in and I've been replacing power adapters all oh, wow. for the last two weeks. So and um, last night it thundered and lightning so bad. It was just shaking my house and bedroom and I couldn't sleep very good. So Yeah. So that's why oh, we, we kind of kicked into the after show a little bit sooner. Yeah. Is because we know that there may be problems going forward. And so we're going to try to, we're going to try to get through this a little bit, maybe a little bit quicker just so Tim doesn't have to go home and, uh. It is raining a little bit. We'll mm-hmm. see. So, um, but anyway, you guys. So, a couple of things. Now, Tim, you always give us an update first on your investment. So, yep. we have a $10 investment that YouTube Punk gave us. It went up to about $23, you might remember. It's, nice. It's down to about sixteen seventy five right now. Okay. So, it's still holding pretty steady, and uh, it's become a uh, very staple in our portfolio. So, let me tell you about something I did stock-wise. I actually already told you. Right. <laughs> but, um, so, um, beginning of 2017... I bought WWE stock for $35 a share approximately. Right. I bought just a couple of shares, not much. And I was thinking, I'll ride the wave to WrestleMania. Because okay, I know the right. stock will probably take a little bit of a boost to WrestleMania. And then I'll get a little bit of a return. It won't right. be much, but it'll be a little bit. Well, guess what happened after I bought the stock? It was they announced exploded. a billion dollar deal with Fox right. to do SmackDown. And at that point, it skyrocketed. Well, I sold it this week before the earnings report. Okay. It was at 99, almost 100 bucks a share. Wow. Guess what happened after the earnings report? It fell. They missed it big time. They're they're um they're they're projected. They missed it big time. It dropped by 15 or 20 dollars. Wow. So I sold, I bought and sold at the right time. I don't always do that, but yeah. I did it this time. One trick and is so, I hardly ever hold through earnings. Yeah. The only one I was pretty unless confident Unless you know, unless you The know. only one I was pretty confident was Apple's earnings the other day and they were great. Yeah. So unless you know for sure an earnings report's going to be good, um, I held on to my Square stock, which for those of you guys who don't know, Square is a payment uh, processor. Um, I held on to that, and they had a big disappointment. I, it fell quite a bit. Now, you know earnings. who had a great uh, a great thing was Zynga. Yes, and a lot did. of people got Zynga free stock when you sign up. It's right. one of the most common stocks you yep. get. And so I sold you, it before the earnings report this time, too, yeah, unfortunately. And uh, it, they did okay. And yeah. I've got a call out. It went up by like a dollar or two. Yeah. Yeah, so I was about to say. Zynga so. is doing good. And they got some online. People still out there playing Facebook games? I'm just wondering. Yeah. Anybody out there oh, still yeah. playing Facebook games? I don't know. There's some people playing them. Still playing uh, Words with Friends, Candy Crush type games. There's still quite a few of them out there. There you go. So, um, but yeah. So, guys, you're missing out on some money here. That's what we're saying. And if you want to sign up, you haven't signed up for Robin Hood. Why not sign up? It's completely right. free. And when you sign up with one of the links down below, Tim, you right. get a free stock. We, we get a free stock. stock. Free. So, free. I like free. And here's the thing about Robinhood, Tim. No, no per no fee transactions. No. So you can buy as much stock as you want. Guess what you pay for it in fees? I went Nothing. to print for my taxes. Uh, it was like 30-something pages of stock trades I did. I'm like, no, I'm not printing all this. I just printed a summary. Exactly. But think about if all those transactions per page, pages. Oh, yeah. 37 pages. Imagine if I would have paid six ninety five or even four ninety five or even two ninety five per transaction, I would be definitely be hundred transactions would be three hundred bucks. Right, and, and $3 that was a transaction. that was probably three or four thousand transactions. Right. So, to give you an idea of you know, it, it allows uh, low term money to, to or you know short term. You don't have to buy. A, you you see, buy. I, I always feel like if you're getting if you're in charge per transaction, you have to buy a lot of something. No. The thing about Robinhood is you can buy one of something, right. <laughs> one stock of Apple, one right. stock of Amazon, and it doesn't cost you anything. And right. so that's where it really comes down. You, you can, can also buy uh, Bitcoin 
in, in, in pieces. Correct. You can buy a tenth of a Bitcoin. Right. Instead of a whole Bitcoin, which is, you know, been and fluctuating again, a little bit. I don't think there's any fees on that. Like there no, are with other marketplaces. Zero. So zero fees. Guys, Robinhood is the bomb. And we use it and all trade the time. it 18 times a day. Bitcoin's no trade limit either. Exactly. It's weird. But so. anyway, uh, I'm, I'm really getting where I like Webull too, though, John. Yeah, I know you've and, talked about Webull before. It's something you should check into. So Well, I will say this about um, uh, some of the things. Obviously, I don't always make money, guys. I've lost some money, too. But, you know, I feel like I make more than I lose most yeah. of the time. Well, so, and. And here's the deal is if you invest in companies that you know, a lot of times you'll be in good shape. Companies you do that your you know research. Are stable, right, exactly. So um, I'm still invested in Dave and Buster's. I still make quite a bit of money in Dave and Buster's, uh, even though it's fluctuated quite a bit. How's your um, Nintendo stock doing? It's about even where I bought it. Okay. So, I mean, it, it is it is pretty much flat. My GameStop stock, I'm very <laughs> upset about, <laughs> obviously. Right. Um, it's gone down quite a bit. I don't have a lot in GameStop, but I have some. So mm. I do feel like it's going to go up when they get bought out and it's yeah. going to happen. But, it, you know, it is a matter. risk, but like I said, you can minimize your risk because you don't have to buy a ton of it. Exactly. Is it just, just a only, couple of shares. Yeah, only do... Uh, I started off with $25. Uh, one time was up to about seven or $800, and now I'm about half of that. But when you <laughs> consider I started with 25 right. A year ago, I haven't done too bad. So even if you just get into ETF trading, which is yes. some, I mean, so e, like like even if you just want to do an ETF, and ETFs are very safe. You can, I mean, right. Vanguard has a lot of good ETFs. But basically, what that allows you to do is ride the market. So like, yes. and here's the thing about the market, guys, it almost always goes up. Right? I mean, there may be times where you have a little dip, but when you're talking about the market as a whole, the market for the most part is always increasing. So if you're using an ETF, you can really just, I mean, even though they're kind of expensive, if you buy one share of an ETF, a lot of times it's going to just gradually right. go up for you. I know a lot of people who have their retirement funds in those kind of ETFs. Yes. And so that works really well most, for you Most mutual funds are. And another good thing is, let's say energy when do you think energy stocks go up during the summer when oh, it's hot yeah. and stuff oh, yeah. so you can buy in the Oil winter when it's cold mm -hmm. and then buy and sell in the summer and always make money shipping companies usually go up during the during the winter time when people are buying for christmas and things True. i mean so you know there's there's always trends in markets that you'll see and so if you just look and do some research you'll find it um youtube punk says stern jersey jack roth rules are all private companies that's correct yeah so but nintendo is not nintendo is a publicly traded company you can buy nintendo on um, robin hood you can buy sony on Robin Hood. So, of course, Microsoft is available on Robin Hood. If you buy those, those are all gaming companies now. Um, Activision Blizzard is on um, is on Robin Hood. So, I mean, their stock, you know, if you're into Activision Blizzard stuff is good as well. Um, you can just send us $10 a month like YouTube Punk does, and, <laughs> and we'll give him a stock. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give him a stock. He so has a lot of stock in us. There you go. So, but um, guys, we always, re you know, recommend get into stock at least just you, and the thing about Robinhood, Tim, is you just get your feet wet. You don't yeah. have to. You don't have to buy a thousand shares or something. Just buy no. one share or something, you know, and don't risk a lot of See money. Does, Try right. how it does. Right, exactly. So it's good stuff. Um, me and Tim uh, sometimes do more high risk things like medical stocks and things. There's a lot mm -hmm. of volatility in that, so you have to be careful. But um, you know, well, it's it, also where your research can pay off. Exactly. Like when somebody's got FDA approval coming up, or uh, what I like, John, is when somebody's speaking at a conference. Right. You're never speaking at a conference talking about what a bad job you did. Right. You're always, if you're a speaker, there's something you're, even if you had bad results, you're going to pro pro project it to be right. <coughs> Fair enough. Right. Sorry. <laughs> That's very different. interesting documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw uh, that. You did see it. Okay. Oh, we right. need to. Okay. We need to. Very nice, wasn't it? Right. Very interesting, wasn't buy it? Buy the rumor, sell the news. There That's you what go. You buy, do. Yeah, buy the rumor, yeah. sell the news. Absolutely. So there you go. So again, investment talk is over, Tim. But I did make some money in WWE stock. So thank you, all, all you pro wrestling fans out there, <laughs> for, for uh, funding me. So I do appreciate it. So maybe okay. a good time to buy while it's down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I think it's going to hit above 100 eventually. It's I just do. a matter of when. Waiting it out. Exactly. So it right now it gets to that 100 mark and drops every time. Like it just can't cross that. Our barrier. friend Mike is in at like 18 dollars. I know. So he, yeah. I mean, he should he should have sold when I sold. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I would have done it. I so I would have been done. Like, yeah. So, um, but um, I think <laughs> it's good. So there you go. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Arcade Repair Tips stock shares are priceless. There you go, Tim. That's All what right. YouTube Punk says. Yeah. So there you go. He's got a lot of shares here. <laughs> so yeah. I think we're on the OTC, the 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 uh, pink slip stock or whatever. <laughs> pink slip the ones stock. that are point oh 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 oh. <laughs> we're about uh, to get delisted. Yeah, is what you're saying. <laughs> I don't think we can ever get listed. There you go. Uh, James says I got a scramble cabinet, no monitor, and a Marvel superheroes uh, CPS two board. Can I use an LCD with with it? Yes, yeah, you sure. can. 
So yes, you can. Um, you need may a need you may need a converter board or buy an LCD that supports 15 kilohertz. That's what we would tell you. So, uh, but yes, you can use an LCD with it. So you get one from Holland Computer. Oh, Mr. Dwayne says you're welcome. Must be a wrestling fan. Thank you. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, look, I, I love WWE, and I'm gonna go to an XFL game. I'm just telling you right now. Next spring, I, we are at one. You know, um, one of the Bob um, Stoops is your oh, yeah. boy, so we yeah. gotta be at one. You so. know, uh, I also watched a documentary. I didn't list this in my talk show stuff. Um, well, I saw Andre the Giant. Have you seen that? I have seen that one. That great. is a great video. That's the HBO and one? Right, yeah, HBO with, one. With Andre WWE, the Giant. that's a really great that one. That was a good video. Have you seen the Nature Boy 30 for 30? No. About Ric Flair? I need to watch that, watch too. Watch that one. More wrestling more wrestling uh, documentaries. But, uh, but so cool. I'm an old school wrestling fan. I mean, the new stuff just doesn't appeal to me as much. Um, everything from the 90s and before, basically, right. you know, um, is, is what I like. And so, uh, but, you know, the new stuff's fine. I mean, there's there was fine stuff after, like, after 2000, but I just, did, I lost interest. I don't know if that was just college and I got busy or Maybe. whatever it was. But <clears throat> anyway. So, okay, we're going to get to more watch stuff here in a bit. But we already know that you watched the Theranos documentary on HBO. I did. And, we, and you watched and the Andre Giant. Band, so watch we'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, Tim, how about an update on that Mr. Gaddy's informal audience survey? You know, we got, you, you want to sh- show some of the answers that we got? Sure. So I'm going to, okay. uh, so we got some feedback. Now, why don't you remind everybody what you're asking? What we were talking about is I'm, I'm kind of doing a focus group with within us is about an all you can play deal. How much should it cost? Um, we had an idea of a minimum amount of tickets or a maximum amount of tickets that you can win for a certain price, or should it be as many tickets as you can win? Am I going to lose my shirt? So that was kind of the idea we're tossing around, or do we do one that's no tickets, but it's unlimited play? Mm -hmm. And And so this is some of the feedback that we got. We're going to throw this up here real quick. Uh, Tim, different Tim, says, My two cents, Mr. Gaddy's Air Hockey Basketball Shot Foosball Tournaments would be awesome fun. Because you also mentioned tournaments. Oh, yeah. You want to do some tournaments. Make several tournaments for different age groups. $25 per person per hour is too much for families. He was talking about the free play. And 500 included tickets doesn't sound like much fun. More fun to earn them. Free play in Texas charges ten dollars for a day pass to their arcade pinball machines, but they have no ticket games. And Tim, right. that's a big that's a big thing that people don't realize sometimes. I'm totally willing to do that. About four hours is all I can enjoy of sights and sounds. I bet they make most of the money on food, sports bar service located in the building. Maybe you could too. Now you make money on food, but the well, the, the thing the, is, you really want to make money on both. Yeah. Right? The problem is, is that with a buffet, your your margin is not as high. it's not as high. And so we're mm-hmm. not like Chuck E. Cheese. We're not selling a three dollar pizza for 20 bucks right you've got food loss yeah which food is loss yeah. which is is so we make up for our loss in the game room right and so i've got to make a profit at it and uh but i understand what he's saying and, and we may have come up with a medium range solution we'll talk okay. see what else comes got some more uh, feedback here youtube punk chimed in and said the tournament winner should get a cool but goofy trophy ham it up like you would a professional athlete who just won some crazy marathon i think that's funny there you go so, and then uh, we also had one more from Chris. Chris said, the all-you-can-play thing has been used in mostly retro arcades and barcades. However, it could be tried in places like Chuck E. Cheese or family-friendly arcades. Who does it? With mostly tickets and modern arcade games. You're right. Chuck E. Cheese does it now, right? Right. You don't want to run an arcade like a G-rated casino for Pete's sake. The all-you-can-play route, if done right, can be a good idea, but it really depends on the price. Some customers are going to think you're out of your mind greedy. $10 to $25 is just too high to start toying with the idea. I strongly think it would be best to do a test run on it at a reasonable price. $10 may be too risky. There is a chance you get mixed results. Tim, um, he's saying that $10 $25 is too much, but to me, that uh, I mean, for the amount of play that you were getting, I felt like it was pretty fair yeah. to me. Compared to what it would cost you normally to right. just go out and play. Right. Um, I said either that or you haven't been out too much because I just spent... A free ticket to the movies. I just spent twenty two dollars on popcorn yeah, and drinks. Yeah, me and Deirdre did too. <laughs> so at the same time, you know, I think we're in comparison. But maybe we'll, we'll. But I did take a lot of these things into consideration, and I have talked to a lot of our customers. And what we kind of have come up with is we're going to try it for about three weeks with a nineteen ninety nine. All you can play, no tickets. But it also includes the kids' unlimited buffet and unlimited drinks. So kids so, or adult too. So it's a kids or adults. Okay, either they one. They get a free buffet or all the food they can eat, all the drink they can drink, plus unlimited gameplay, no tickets for nineteen ninety nine. 
That's not and bad. I so twenty dollars, you get twenty dollars. You get all the pizza, your and drink meal, you can eat. and entertainment. And entertainment. I think that's where we're hitting that price point. Like you said, uh, if you take three kids to the movies, uh, you know, and play video games while you're there, think about and it. That get way. Popcorn, and, and get popcorn. And get a drink. Right, you're going to spend that kind of money. Yes. Anywhere you go, right? Uh, even taking them to McDonald's or something today has gotten pretty expensive. So I think we're we're going to give it a try for three weeks, and I'll update when we do that and let you guys know how it's doing. Sounds good. Now, no tickets, though. No tickets. That's the that's the kicker. So that is the kicker you because can't win anything. Uh, one thing is we give out a lot. Chuck E. Cheese averages about five tickets per play, so they have an unlimited for ten dollars. But you can seriously win maybe three hundred, four hundred tickets. Sure. If you're really good, that's you. You have to really be going around playing some games in an hour. That's basically um, three or four dollars worth of prizes. Mine, you can you can easily win three or four thousand dollars, which equates to thirty or forty dollars in prizes. So I can't give out forty and sell it for twenty. Right, it just doesn't make economic sense. Or I, the only way I could do an all you could play like that, I'd have to probably charge thirty dollars. And I think they're right. I think now we're getting out of out of right, hand, right? Really too high. So what we felt like is most people, you either choose to play, pay your own, and probably pay more than twenty 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 dollars, and win all the tickets you want, and but come out with some good prizes. I had some teenagers in the other day, and they had won quite a bit of stuff. And uh, now every Tuesday is half price day, right? And so you can win double the amount of tickets too, and our average tickets is about twenty per tick, twenty sure. per play. So you can figure it up. How many games can you play in an hour? If you played uh, one game every five minutes, twenty times, um, would that be twenty times twelve? Right? Am I figuring right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, uh, I mean uh, there's six, yeah, 12. 20 times 12 is 480 tickets right. if you never hit a jackpot. Right. And if you hit a jackpot, it could easily be more than that. So I think we're just going to go with the no tickets. This is for that family that wants to come in. You already know how much you're going to spend. Kids will have a good time. And they can also what just play friends? video games. It's an excluding any self-merchandise. Self okay. Self-redemption. Because somebody would play a crane machine for exactly. an hour and rob you. Exactly. Because ours are too e are easier to win than most. Now, the only thing I would say is that that doesn't allow the kid to take home something. What I would say is, like, instead of giving them tickets, why not have a, like, set prize that you give them for that? Right. So, like, I don't know, like, you, you buy, like, a whole bunch of, like, little itty-bitty teddy bears. Yeah. And so, like, everybody who does the $20 automatically gets a little itty-bitty teddy bear. Or yeah. gets a coupon for a little itty-bitty te teddy bear that they can take up to the counter and right. cash in. Or just give them a... Uh, Free, I actually thought like your idea, and I thought about that. Free 100 tickets. Right. And they get something. Right. And then you say, here, here's a coupon. Bring, Take that over there. When you get through, right. you get something. I do like the fact that I think you if, get something to I go I think home if you with. got something, though, that you couldn't get otherwise, like you couldn't earn with regular tickets. Maybe it's just a box or a bag of uh, miscellaneous stuff you choose from. Right. Yeah. Or whatever the case may be. I think, but if you give them something that they can't get with regular tickets, then they think they're getting a value. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. think that's what it comes down to. But anyway, Maybe. Let's see what we got here. Um, oh, let's see. Um, James. Maybe okay, a plush toy would be a good idea. because we got Like a little teddy bear or toys. something yeah. like that. I don't know. Uh, so yeah. Michael says, pay to play, just keep rotating games and keeping it fresh. Um, Matty Mo says we do a two hour all inclusive for $20, but we have bowling and laser tag too, which, um, there's a local place here that does that as well. Yeah. Uh, let's but see. But they don't give out, tick they don't include the ticket games. Correct. They don't include video games. And bounce houses. They have bounce houses. Too. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, James says, I eat a lot. I'm going to eat you out of house and home for 20 bucks. Um, the regular buffet is only what? 10 with a drink? $8 or eight with, with 10 with a drink. Yeah. yeah. 10 with a drink. So. Um, yeah, no tickets or cranes with his either. He says so. Mm -hmm. There you go. But um, I think I think that's interesting. Let us know how it goes for yeah. for the twenty dollar deal. We're gonna give it a shot. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. Um, I'm gonna get back to James's Sonic question here in a bit. Okay. So because that has to do with um, movies and TV. I was gonna say Sonic. Oh, he's asking about Sonic the movie. Yes. What okay. were you thinking, Sonic? Of? No, I was I was saying we should bring that up. Yeah. What are people? You know, we'll get that here in a second. Talk um, about Sonic. Next, I have um, Stanley Cup playoffs. So we talked about this. The Dallas Stars are playing the St. Louis Blues in the current round, which I forget which round it is of the Stanley second. Cup playoffs. Second uh -huh. round. So what is the? What's it's two the, to two. Two to two. Oh, yeah, we won last game. night. So, um, but I know Matty Mo Even is, uh, is in St. Louis and is a big Blues fan. So I'm just telling you here, we're coming for you. But you guys. 
guys I think are better than us. I hate to say that. Um, the Blues are really good. Yeah. Um, they're very good. And so um, I, I think our team is good too, but I think it's going to come down to the wire as to who wins. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Game 7 at all. Wow. So, I mean, it's going to be very close. Um, but we wish you guys the best of luck over there on the blue side of things, and we're going to be rooting for the Stars pretty hard here. Um, you know, Tim, I think I heard that the Dallas Stars have, like, the third or fourth best attendance in the league. Wow. I would Okay, and we're in Texas, like the hottest right. state in the, in the entire United States, it seems like, and the Stars games get well attended here. Yeah, that's good. So It's fun to watch. It is it's fun, fun to, to watch. watch live, especially. Yeah, so, I mean, if you haven't been watching uh, the, the playoffs, the, the Stanley Cup playoffs, they're fun to watch. You guys should. Go Blues, whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it has been a great series. It's been a great series. It has been um, a lot of, um, I'll tell you what, uh, you guys play very physical. <laughs> is, that, is that a good way to say it? So, um I, uh, I still am up for debate what's actually illegal in hockey. Yeah, I don't think anything is. I don't, I mean... <laughs> High sticking, I know for a fact. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely illegal, Um, you know. Um, But uh, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, they just let yeah, go. Well, I didn't say nothing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry for all the Facebook posts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, that's okay, that's okay. It's just a little friendly rivalry here. It's going to be good. One of us is going to make it to the Stanley Cup, and you right. know, we'll be good to go. So, hopefully. Um, NFL draft, any thoughts? You know, the only um, thought I've got one, but I'll, I'll let you share first. Well, uh, a, you know, most people who've watched us anytime know that I'm an Oklahoma fan. Yep. And I, what does that say about your program when you have two back to back Heisman Trophy winners and two back to back number one picks? And a lot of people were really dogging on Baker Mayfield. If you had that draft over again, how many people would pick him up number one? Yep. Yeah, I think he went to a, a perfect team for him, the Browns. Right. And they needed somebody like him and a little flamboyant. Having said that, I think the same thing about the Cardinals. I think they needed, they've always had that pocket passer guy. Kyler Murray can throw a football. He definitely can. And he is not, and I don't see him, everybody, I don't see him running and scrambling all over the place. He can sit back in the pocket and pass it. I think he is good for their program. So, of course, after watching that, but me and you being Dallas fans, I'm like, uh, you know. We got Amari Cooper. That was yeah, our first round pick. That was our first round pick. And, and well worth it. I don't see well anybody else that was picked in the first round worth more than him. Right. But then we got down and we started drafting running backs. Like I'm like, what are we doing? Get rid of trading Zeke? It was like I think they just need a suitable backup. Is well, they got two of them. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can receive one. I didn't understand two when we need so many defensive players. So, Agreed. I, most of the time I want to throw my shoe and call Jerry a name, but in somehow they always either trade or drop or do something with them. It's like they know more than I do, and you really don't know. The lo- the draft is really tough because the guy you're high on doesn't do anything. The guy you're wondering, why did they, you know, why did they get that Vandersloot guy? You know, it's like, right. why would you draft him, you know, and then all of a sudden he's rookie of the year. Right. So, uh, overall, I think uh, we did pretty good. I think there was a, some, there just wasn't, the talent-wise, overall, didn't seem like a huge year of people coming up. But then again, you know, all these, uh, Tony Romo was a seventh-round draft pick. So, you know, all these people that uh, make That's it big. your first round doesn't necessarily mean uh, you're doing anything. So I've learned not to put a lot of stock in the draft. Having said that, I still get excited when I see we picked up some good players and stuff. So, what was uh, Dak? Dak was like a fourth round. Yeah, fourth round. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't that high, and look at him now. So, so I thought overall we probably had a solid B grade. You know, I thought no. So, what about the New York Giants? What now, in the heck are okay, they doing? okay. Now, having said that, I'm like, if I was a Giants fan, I would won't be calling for a GM. To be, I don't know what the Giants were doing. That, I was like, that quarterback guy that they picked up, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I, I can see his face, but um, I'm like, that guy is. I mean, he struggled in college. Like, how is this guy going to do in the NFL? Really? But uh, you know, Tim, that's our so, division, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with him. <laughs> I was okay with like, almost all their picks. I was like, yeah. okay, wow, you know, maybe I, they figured was, out a new market in. I was looking for the them to just bump up and draft a water boy or something you know it's like oh we don't need any defensive players we're just going to draft a new water well, boy. then they trade away know. odell beckham jr and you know you're just like what are in the what in the world are they doing i understand Literally if what you're going to totally doing. start over but man I, I don't know and i'm i'm no giants fan but I, if i was i'd be a little upset i would say that was the one person will make me scratch my head but you never know mm-hmm you never know. So, you know, I was mad when the Cowboys traded Herschel Walker, too. But, yeah, but look how yeah, that worked out. Right, right so, it worked out okay. That's right, it definitely did. But, um, oh, any, uh, Matty Moe says uh, Ben Bishop is from St. Louis. He's our uh, goaltender. 
So our goalie. Oh, okay. So, but uh, he he's really good. I don't know if you've watched him, mm-hmm. but any of the the Stanley Cup has been really good. But anyway, yeah. So the NFL draft was very interesting, Tim. And then of course we're in the middle of Major League Baseball season. Um, I'm a Texas Rangers fan, Tim. I have tickets to go to the game on Sunday. Nice. So I'm looking forward to going to the game. I'm ready um, to go. I told my daughter that too. we would definitely take her to one game this Aww. year. This is the one game that we're I'm going. We're before taking it gets the whole too family. hot. Before it gets too hot, because here in Texas. Um, the Texas Rangers are getting a new stadium next year, which will be indoor and mm-hmm. air conditioned. But August games in Texas right now with no air conditioning and it's totally outside. It's a little miserable. It's uh, very miserable. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. So um, we're going before it gets hot. And this is the last year of Globe Life Park, which has been around right. since 1994. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Lots of baseball, though, Tim. The Red Sox are terrible. I don't know how that happened. They won the World Series last year. <laughs> and they're I'm just awful. Too good. Um, you know, Tampa Bay's doing well. Um, the Yankees are doing well, even though apparently half their team is on the injured list. Right. And, I mean, it's just a lot of crazy things in baseball. Well, on injured reserve, not the DL yeah, anymore. Yeah, not the disabled list. Right. The it, injured list. You heard list. about this, yes, right? So right. you do not say the disabled right. list Injured anymore. list. The injured list. So that is Craig. So um, ab- mm-hmm. absolutely. But anyway, guys. Uh, so Any if you're surprises? Fans, good stuff. Any surprises? I don't know. I mean, like, I think I'm surprised by how well, well that we're doing because I thought we'd be terrible. Um, we're okay. We're maybe a game under 500 right now, which right. is pretty decent considering all... The Astros are still the best team in baseball, um, mm-hmm. in my opinion, and the Astros are very good, and they're going to be hard. Seattle has been pretty decent. They've started to look more human recently. Like, mm-hmm. they've, they've, they've been losing a little bit more. Um, you know, Yankees, even though, like I said, half the team's injured, they're still good, which is crazy. The Rays are looking like world beaters, which is crazy. Right. Um, so have a lot of home runs this year. Yeah, Minnesota mm-hmm. looks good. So Minnesota, though, you've kind of figured they look good. they got a young team, and they're doing well. On the National League side of things, I mean, the Dodgers are just cleaning cleaning house. <laughs> you right. know, I mean, they're really good. So, I mean, I love baseball. I, I keep up with most of the teams. But, um, uh, you know, whichever, uh, you know, fa- uh, team you're a fan, or fan of your team of or whatever, um, you know, they're they're all good. Yeah, and so. there's nothing like going to the ballpark. So, we like, exactly. even when we were visiting out of town to stop by yeah, the ballpark. Yeah, we went to Atlanta fun. when we were there for a lot uh, of fun. some Friday Game Expo. It was fun. But anyway. Okay, a little quick uh, cord cutting update. So um, I changed to YouTube TV. I like it better than PlayStation View that I was using, Tim, and I highly recommend it. The problem is that they are going up on their price. Nah, so already. it was forty dollars, and they added um, the Discovery channels like HGTV and mm-hmm. or not Discovery, I can't remember, but HGTV and some of the Food Networks and stuff. And now they're going up ten dollars on the price. So now wow. it's at fifty. Um, we also have Philo, which is like um, a, a minimal um, package, and it's gone going up as well to 20 over 16, which was where it was at. But for those of you guys who want to try cord cutting, um, you know, I used to have PlayStation View, and I liked it a lot. And right now, they're having a sale on their core package. It's going for $40 instead of $50 mm-hmm. for the next two months. So if you guys want to try it out, I think that's till the end of this week. If you guys want to try out a cord cutting service, PlayStation View is very good, and forty dollars for the core service is definitely worth it. You can watch all; should be able to watch most of your baseball teams, your football teams, your hockey. So games, with YouTube the, uh, TV, will you get Cobra Kai? Yes, you do. Without so, having to buy an additional correct. Red. So which I have YouTube TV, so I was able to watch Cobra Kai, and that's a great have... transition into <laughs> what are you watching? Cobra Kai <laughs> and what we are watching. So um, before we move into that, though, Tim, we did get a question about the Sonic trailer, and James says he threw up a little bit in his mouth when he saw it. Um, what did you think from the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, movie trailer? You know, I, I'll admit that part of me was like, at first I was like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't look that good. Then I thought about, it is what it is. It's They're kind of going after not, it's almost like they didn't make it to adult enough. They're, right. they're actually going for kids. It's, it's And then I was like, you know, instead of our age, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused on who is this movie for? Right. Because it's either going to be a great kids movie or a mediocre adult movie, and I can't decide. I think they're trying to hit both audiences, and but it's I, really hard to cater to both. It, it really is to find that movie that both will like. But then again, I'm also like, if we become just, what does it take to wow me anymore? You know, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, I, I, don't I don't know. know that, I don't know how good you could have made it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really tough. Right. I, I just don't know. Like, you'd have to pull some really creative writing out of your hat in order to make it. To right, make it so it's not going to be this great, awesome, thematic, you know, even Avengers, you know, you had these storylines, there were times, you know, when my eyes almost watered a little bit, you know. Oh, I and, cried twice. And so Sorry. it's like, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, there's some, because there's that, we're connected with You're the, connected characters, the characters, right. and it's good. It's not that kind of movie. And right. so I give them a, a little bit of, grain, a, 
grain of salt. It's not that kind of movie, so don't don't worry about it. You know, I think right. it'll, the fact that we got a Sonic the Hedgehog movie is pretty cool. Yeah. So I'll have to leave it like that. I'm with you. It, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to see it at the movie theater. Yeah. But, I mean, when it comes out on digital, I'll probably give it a watch. Yeah. Know, so it seems like Detective Pikachu hits both target demographics. That's true. Detective mm-hmm. Pikachu actually looks pretty decent. Um, you know, I'm a huge Lego Movie fan, and Lego Movie Two hit both very well. See, Adults and kids can en- enjoy, that. but it's very hard to do. You're exactly correct. It takes some really creative writing in order to do it. So yeah, it's it, it's not an easy thing at all. So, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. So Tim, let, let me talk about what I've been watching. I watched Cobra Kai season two. The whole thing finished it already. Yeah, okay. So That's what I I'm mean, gonna do, do soon. you do you want to know anything? The first two well, episodes of the season two, I think, are free, just like last season. Okay. So you can get on there. Oh, it's the first, first one two. and a quarter. I yeah. watched the first one free. So, um, did it. Was it as good as the first season? No. No. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, and here's the deal, kind of like we talked about. Definitely worth the watch. Connected to the characters. Right. Right? Uh-huh. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I am connected to the Karate Kid universe. Right. Like, I. Even. If Cobra Kai would have never existed, like the first season, I still would be connected to the characters sure. because I mean it's just the movies and I'm connected. So is it as good as season one? No. Okay. Is it good? Good. Yes. yes. Okay. So should so you must, watch must it watch. if you're a Karate Kid fan? Must watch. Yes, it's a must watch. Now, if you're not a Karate Kid fan, should you watch this? Probably not. You should probably if you don't have any nostalgia for Karate Kid, I would say. See, and that was the opposite. I'm hearing this too for the opposite of the first season. Right. First season was you never ever seen Karate Kid in your life. Would you enjoy it? Yeah, probably probably would. Right. This one is that goes back so much. That's what people are saying. It's like if now you gotta yeah, it's kind of like okay, you watch first season now you gotta watch second season. But had you never seen the first season, would it do any good to watch second season? Almost. I've heard people say that. You really need to watch the first season. If you haven't seen the first season, don't jump in the second season because, I mean, obviously a lot of stuff hinges. The problem I have with the second season is it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like Daniel and Johnny have grown as characters. They are still kind of the same characters they were in season one. Oh, okay. And I like to see characters... And grow. see, I... I mean, I take that back to a certain extent. Like, they change. Like, the characters change, but I don't okay. feel like they grow. Well, here's what I'm look, here's what I'm looking for. Either them to become best friends... Or total arch enemies. You see, but what this, happens? What happens is kind of what I'm happens. Feeling in, is it, it? What happens is kind of what happens in season one. They bounce back and forth. Right. And I don't like, like they, the bouncing. Like right. They, they can't, can't decide, let it. Yeah. yeah. They can't let it be. You know, I mean, just like in season one, where they are bouncing back and forth, where like you know. Well, once it they're going, see, they're going around together. In the the first other season. evil guy. I'm thinking now. Johnny's gonna all because you're almost rooting for Johnny in the first so, season. You're rooting for him to. Grow up and not be a jerk. And so the, the problem is that you're going to want season three. Okay. You know what right. I'm saying? Sure. Like, I mean, that's the whole point, Need right? It to. So this is set up. I mean, it's a lot of setup. It's but, the middle movie. So what a. it does is it takes the characters and expands the rivalries to all of their students, right? That's basically right. what it does. So the characters... Kind of passing the baton. Yeah, exactly. The characters of Johnny... And, and Daniel, but basically stay still a little bit. They do grow in some ways, uh-huh. but as far as like their relationship, it's pretty much still the, it's it's in the same place as season one for the okay. most part. But some things do change. But that may that help. it's going to make season three very. I was gonna say maybe see, that's what they're leading right. up to. So the middle season is always kind of exactly yeah. So okay, okay. So you watched the Theranos documentary. I did so watch that. What did you think about some of the stuff? Man, that was crazy because um, just... And what was the name of it? I can't remember it. Um, uh, it was on HBO. I had it on the outline for last month. I can't remember the name. It was amazing what they were able to get away with. It's yes. just crazy. And then it makes you wonder um, you know, how that was possible in this day and age. But they... they you know, in the way that with the references to Edison and stuff, how they sold it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that they sold it. I think their intentions were good. I think they sold a bill of goods hoping that they could uh, figure some That's stuff exactly out. I did. think they, but I think once you got, once you get into that lie, you just can't stop it then. You know, it's like. They're doing a fictional series on Hulu about her, too. Oh, that would be so, interesting. Which, is, which should be funny. It's very interesting. And uh, not that some stuff didn't come out of it either that, you know, could. Right. But, uh, boy, just a, a lesson learned. Imagine working there you know i kept thinking myself you know kind of like when i took on this job you know there's the appeal of a, we're a new company and we're starting a business and all this stuff and, and we're gonna help people yeah, yeah you know and now you know you're thinking about how they felt some of the guys were really really thought they were right 
So anyway, it interesting just, documentary. Well, and then there are a lot of people though, and engineers that told them it's not possible, it's not possible, and they didn't listen. They just right. kept pushing forward. It's like if top engineers are telling you something isn't possible, mm-hmm. you got to change. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, and I think her problem was is that they didn't want to adapt at all. Mm-hmm. Like she wanted the box to be this size. Right. This you know, size. it has Could to be this bigger. size. Exactly. And and the the engineer guy was like, we can't do it in this size right now. You right. know, like, we don't have the technology. It's right. physics. We can't do it, right. you know? And, like, they didn't listen. They just kept doing what they wanted to do. And, so interesting, though. Yeah. So you should watch it if you haven't seen it already. Um, <coughs> bless Excuse you. me. The Andre the Giant. That was good. That was uh, the, the the scene where he goes, where basically he's um, fighting Hulk Hogan. Yes. And he tells him something. Without spoiling, he tells right. Hulk Hogan something. If you're a wrestling fan, you should know. And, yeah, you already know. Yeah, you know. Um, so that was, that was so good and so interesting, but, um, Andre the Giant, I got my brother an Andre the Giant action figure for Christmas one year. I just want to shout out to my brother. Let me talk about the act. Do you know what the act is about? So I have Hulu, Hulu. You have and I've watched seen the, the preview, but I don't know what it's about. Okay. I mean, like I've seen it on my dash. Right. And, uh, it's, it's really good. I think the first season just finished this week and uh, I think it'll be done for a while. They'll probably shoot a second season or it, it wrapped up to the point where it may be done. Wow. So I don't know because it's, it's only, it's a real short story. It, so it couldn't go very far about, uh, Munchiser by proxy where somebody thinks like her mother would say, you can't eat sugar, that you're allergic to it. Right. And so she would tell her, and she would carry her around a wheelchair, and the girl could walk, but her mother was getting all this sympathy, and right. there were on these telethons. And there are people who like, really do this. Yeah. There are stories about this. Right. Yeah. And so what eventually is the girl wakes up and is like, I can walk, and I can, it really doesn't hurt if I eat something. And, she, and so she eventually comes up with a plot, and this is not, this will tell you everything. I mean, you already know the story, then you see what led and what happened to it, so I'm not spoiling anything. But basically, she talks her boyfriend into killing her mother so they could run off and escape. Wow. This crazy lady that she lives with was played by, what's her name, Arquette. She's so good in the part. And oh, um, I know who you're talking about. Patricia Arquette. Patricia, yeah. Was awesome. Anyway, uh, to escape, and she treats her like a little girl, Disney princess, and she's like 18, 19, and she's like, wear this frilly dress and, you know, just crazy stuff. She figures her only way out. So is it based on a true story? Yes, it's based. Wow. It is a true story. It's happening right now, and what happens is, is um, when they, and this is not spoiling anything. It's all this is already out there, and then you read the story of what happened. So um, she goes. Uh, she's in prison right now for it, and she is claiming, "Look, I told the guy that that's probably my only way out, but I never gave him a knife and said right. go kill my mom." Right. She goes, he did the murder. I might have planted a little seed, but she goes, I never said, go kill my mother. Right. And um, he's, he definitely has some issues and stuff. And the mo- and the show makes it appear out that she really did twist his arm, but you really don't know. It's right. like, and her mother was horrible to her. So you're like, almost you feel like sympathy for her still. I mean, she was made to go around in a wheelchair when she could walk. Right. Even in her own house, her mom's like, get him back in your wheelchair. You know, you're going to fall. Your leg's going to break. And would say crazy stuff like that to her. So um, you you don't feel sorry when the mother dies. But then you're like, but then again, is this the right way to handle it? Could she have not just ran out the door and escaped and ran right. away? Then having, then, and she was like, she says today. So she's serving, he's serving life and he'll never get out. She's serving a 10-year prison sentence. There you go. And so it's a lot of... Uh, let's see, James says, I got in trouble for something similar. My name is Jimmy, so I get money from the Jimmy Fund. Uh, too bad the attorney general doesn't agree with me. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but it um, really, yeah, that it sounds interesting. She got a, it really, it, well, and the acting in it is, if you, I tell you, because you're going to want to do this. You're going to watch the show. And, and like I said, I'm not spoiling it. You're going to research and you go, oh my gosh, did they nail them characters? The girl, she talks like a little princess guy. She said, Mama talked to her like that. You know, right. she's, and the real person in real life talks, talks like, like that. that. It's like she looks like her, she acts like her, and, uh, you know, she's real naive, doesn't know anything. And then she meets this guy on the internet and he kills her mother. You know, it's like, golly. But the, the show, 
you know, she always claims her innocence. Like I never told them to kill her. I just right. said I needed out of this, and that may be one of the ways or whatever. But very, very interesting show. And you've been watching Handmaid's Tale, another Hulu. yeah, it's another Hulu. I've been kind that of, one's uh, been an uh, award winner. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's pretty. And uh, I really, you know, that that book came out like when I was a teenager, right. and I didn't really. And there, I'm sure it's a little bit more modern ad- adaptation to it. You know what it's about? Uh, sort of. Bit? I mean, I've again, right. I've seen the little title card. Well, what it's about is in the in the very near future that uh, the government of the United States is overthrown, but it's not overthrown by like um, terrorist type people, although they are. They're more religious, re- very religious. It was almost like if the Puritans or something took over. Right. And their thing is, is that what has happened is because of pollution and all this stuff and all the chemicals in our food, in the near future, uh, people become sterile and they can't have kids. And, and you know, they're religious uh, people that think be fruitful and multiply. There's something wrong. So they go back to the Old Testament. Well, we can take on a anybody that's fertile I don't have to love them, but we can take them into our household and have babies with them, and then it'll be our baby. Right. Kind of like the Abraham. They quote Abraham. They quote the Bible a lot. And that makes it, because it's almost like far-fetched, but then it's like, wait a second, this could really happen. Right. And then that's all they are. And so what they do is they pick people who were in trouble. Um, She uh, was an adulteress. Uh, and they said, God will forgive you now for all these sins you've done if you come into our household. And But then they kind of take advantage of it. They're, they have one goal to make and have babies. Sure. And the guy takes advantage of it because he's a guy and he's right. kind of evil and you know not really a good person. So then the whole story about it. And apparently we're the only country that's doing this. And Canada and other places are like, if you can make it to Canada, we'll 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 save to you and sure. all this stuff. But at the same time, like Mexico is like, well, maybe we could consider it because we have whole towns where no kid has been born in six years. Right. So at some point, it makes you think: Could it really happen? Like if 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 nobody in Tyler, Texas, had a baby for six years, right? And somebody said, "Well, you know, I mean, you could take on this handmaid." And she will have a baby for you, and you just treat her nice and take good care of her. Otherwise, she's going to be out on the street anyway with right. no husband and nowhere to live. So it makes you think, could it really happen? It's kind of, kind of, but and of course, the acting in it is just tremendous. Right. I was about to say award winning. It's an award winning show, and I know why. Right. Because it really makes you think, and you feel for these characters, and you they really do. Even the bad people, you kind of feel, feel with them. There's a lady that her job is nothing more than to train them to be, you know, these people that baby makers. That's all they are. And but then you think, well, at one time they were college professors, and one of them uh, did gene therapy and stuff, and they need somebody to do that. But she's a woman, right? And she's a baby, a handmaid. So right. now she's lesser. They don't they don't value her medical opinion anymore. They're right. like, we don't want to hear about that. And all women are just totally out of the government there's sure. no women in government at all golly it's really weird and so anyway good show what have you been watching so um cobra kai okay um, but i've also been watching arrow and flash and ap bio have you seen ap bio no what is ap bio comes on nbc tonight thursday nights but it's about a guy who used to be a harvard professor he gets kicked out of harvard and starts teaching ap bio at a local high school Okay. And the thing about this guy is he is terrible. He is like okay. the worst person you'd ever meet. So like he's teaching this AP bio class, but he doesn't teach them anything about biology at all. And uh-huh. he only uses them to basically do his evil deeds. And so, oh, okay. But it's a comedy. So, okay. um, But he's a terrible person who tries to get other people blamed for stuff. And <laughs> tries to get other professors at Harvard fired. It's a comedy. And, you know, exactly. Okay. It's a comedy. So, But he's like the worst person you'd ever meet. But the funny thing about it is that he's the snarkiest, worst person you ever met, you know. So, uh, but it's really funny. Um, it, the guy who um, is the teacher is from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I can't remember the actor's okay. name, but he's really funny. Oh, you know what? Um, and um, <clears throat> oh, um, Patton Oswalt is in it as well. He plays the principal in it, so if you know who he is. Um, okay. But um, it's very funny. If you just it's thirty minutes, so if you haven't seen that, you should. Um, I I have almost finished up Marvel's Agents of Shield season five. Okay. And season six is about to come out on the tenth of May, and the um, this season takes place one year after Avengers Endgame. 
Oh. So one year, remember, same universe. Okay. So right. the events in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. happened one year after the events of Infinity War or Endgame, one or the other. Okay. So it actually takes place all in the same universe. So that's pretty cool. So if you're an Avengers fan, you should watch you're Marvel's Agents, you're like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You should. Okay. But um, so let's talk about the Avengers. All right. Real quick. Um, Endgame. Without, without we, spoiling. Right. We both saw it. Yeah. What'd great. you think? It's awesome. Good, it's good. Great movie. You just saw it a minute ago. Yeah. So, it's very uh, fresh on my that's mind. That's right. Very fresh on your memory. I, here. Um, I cried twice. Well, there was if you've seen time. it, you probably know which two times those yeah. are. There was so, a little, um, little... My eyes were watering a little bit. My allergies were acting up pretty go. bad. There you go. I did have to go to the restroom once. Okay. Uh, I went very fast, just like I did mm-hmm. here. Okay. <laughs> so right. I went very fast. <laughs> very fast. Um, let's see. I saw it with my wife. And um, I will say that they pretty much got anybody... Between Infinity War and this one, they basically got the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. How did she like it? She loved it. Yeah. See, yeah. I've, I'm hearing that. My daughter went and saw it, and she was like, oh my gosh, so good. Yeah. It's really good. She loved it. So, Because it really does have that thematic part, storytelling part to it. Right. And it wraps up. If you've seen the last 22 movies, you have to see this one, right? I mean, here's, no... here's what it made me want to do, though. There are a lot of gaps in the movies I've seen, maybe half. Right. Maybe a little more than half. I didn't see the last Ant Man. There's a lot of stuff I, I think that seen. was on Netflix. And yeah, and so I'm like, you know, it makes me. I I would probably like to go back and start watching some of those because some stuff I'm sure would, you know, didn't necessarily to you, have to send watch them. Right. I was gonna send you. There's um. I and my wife had not seen anything past Thor Ragnarok, okay. so she had missed about three movies. She had missed Black Panther. She missed um. She missed uh, Ant Man Wasp. She missed um, what was that? I, I didn't one? see Ant Man Wasp. Yeah, um, she missed another one too in there. Okay, so who was the? There's a female character at the end that wasn't Marvel. Who's your red hair? Who is that lady? I'm asking. She she and I'm not spoiling anything. Are you sure? Yes, <laughs> she was fighting at the very end, and um, he he's like, "You better give up" or something. She makes some big statement like. Uh, Scarlet Witch? Was it Scarlet? Is that who yeah. that was? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, red hair. Yeah, she has red hair. Okay. Because yeah. she like showed up at the end out of nowhere. You didn't see like, Infinity War? No, I haven't seen all of Infinity oh! War. That's part of my Infinity War's on Netflix. You need to go see it. Okay, I need to watch that. So you should have watched I that before watch... you technically watched it. Right. Endgame. But, I mean, you don't have to. But uh, Infinity War, yes. Um, so Scarlet Witch was also in Age of Ultron. It was the first time she shows up. So in Avengers Age of Ultron, um, Scarlet Witch shows up with her brother Quicksilver. Oh, yes. Okay, you remember okay, that? Okay, yes. That's her. Okay, that's her. So. All right, I'm just putting a little, little puzzle. Sorry, okay. guys, for the... Okay, I'm going to give three context clues. Three not context. spoilers. Okay, not... Not spoilers. These only mean something if you've seen the movie. Right. Okay? Let me think. Hang on. i got to make sure I get them right. got to make sure. I don't want to don't want to give away anything. Okay. Context clues, right? So, uh, what was the first one I was going to... Oh, tacos. Yes. Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> tacos. That means something to you if you've seen Infinity War. Right. Tacos. Right. Yes. If you've seen Infinity if War, seen you Infinity can laugh. If you've seen Infinity War, at. you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tacos. Uh, let's see the next one. Fat. And yeah. you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've seen Infinity War, you know exactly what I'm talking about. See, so, that's, what that's I, it. No, no, what? I'm not saying any other words with that. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen it. So, the last word, Rat. Rat. Okay. Rat. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. If I say rat, you know what I'm talking about. If you've seen Infinity War. Right. Right? Right. Rat, so, fat, and tacos. Yes. Rat, fat, and tacos. That makes up... Th- those are the all, those are context clues. They're not spoilers. Because you have no idea what I'm talking about if you haven't seen the movie. Right. If you haven't seen the movie, see, and I say how it ties to Le- the big Lebowski. <laughs> that's, that's true. That, that, to me, is funny. It is. It's a funny reference in there. So, there anyway. you go. So... He's showing, he's showing the <laughs> I don't know if I want to show that one. Do I want to show that one? Um, yeah, I'll show it. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> you see what he put in there? What he put? You, you look. Uh-huh. Yes, that plays into it too. Yeah. <laughs> that that so, is true. So, so guys, we're trying not... No spoilers. What did, what did everybody clues, else think clothes. about the movie, though? So. I, I don't see how you could not like it. Yeah. I, I haven't heard anybody really say anything negative. It was just, um, besides it being really long. I will say that some of the... It goes the slow The explanation in, in the movie of a certain element is not very well done. Yes. 
until you get to a certain scene. Where, <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to spoil. Okay. Until you get to a certain scene. Right. Uh, and then I feel like it does a better job of explaining what happens. And you may not know exactly what I'm talking about there, but I think the way that it explains a certain element of the movie is at first it's kind of, it's kind of, um, it, it's not well done. Mm-hmm. And then later in the movie, it does a better job of explaining that element. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it like that. So, um, but that's all I'm going to say. So, <laughs> did not like the way that turned out. He said fat. So, <laughs> well, you know, that's up to you. But, um, but it is worth seeing. Um, the, uh, the, the two brothers who did the movie and I can't, the Russo brothers who, who, you know, directed the movie, they say that they had an embargo on spoilers until Monday. When Monday takes place, then... All spoilers are off. That's so, exactly the element I was talking okay, about. Yeah, that's my my thing too. Because I was like, but they do a better job of explaining that element when they start going after the pieces. Yes. Okay. At one point, if right, you remember, because there's a better job. Otherwise, there would have been the perfect happy ending, and there's and exactly there's, it can't be nothing's perfect. Exactly. So. That's the only complaint I really have about it, if that makes sense. And hopefully anybody who hasn't gotcha. seen it yet, it makes no sense. No, it shouldn't yeah. make any sense. <laughs> no sense. So but if you go. haven't seen it yet, you need to go see it. Exactly. So, so Monday movie. is the embargo where anybody can spoil anything, according to the Russo brothers. Okay. So <laughs> Monday, once Monday comes, it all spoilers. Comes awesome. Exactly. Uh, you know. So um, James says Avengers was good. Enough said. And then uh, Geek Light said awesome movie. So, I mean, a lot of you guys have seen it like we have, and it is awesome. I really enjoyed it. Um I enjoyed the ending. I did too. Immensely. Me, yeah. Both. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, I should say, I say both endings. And, and, and you guys will know what well, I mean by and, that too. And, I, and this is not a spoiler because a lot of people told me this, don't stay all the way through the credits yeah. and all that. You so don't need to stay. There's, there's, there's no, no extra after scene. credit scene. And the reason why is because it, 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 it ends. It ends. It's an and ending. It's, it's an ending. Right, so exactly. It, they really did a good job, I think, in that, making it. Where you're not going, what's the next movie going to be about? It was like, oh. Exactly. I mean, I really think, I mean, at this point, if you want to stop watching Marvel movies, you probably could. I Um, mean, that's what I told somebody earlier. There'll still be more. Yeah, there'll be more. But, I mean, it wraps up, it wraps up a lot of stuff very nice. In a Mm -hmm. nice little box. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it wraps up everything. See, I haven't seen Doctor Strange. You haven't seen Doctor Strange? I haven't seen Doctor Strange. (laughs) Yeah, see, that's what you're saying. I need to go, I need to sit down and watch and catch up on all Okay, the first Iron Man is my favorite one. Yeah. Okay. The okay. first Captain America is fantastic. Winter Soldier is fantastic. Doctor Strange is one of my favorites, and people look at me weird when I say that. I know, um, but I, I love Doctor Strange. He's one of my favorite characters. And he played in a Marvel. key role in this one. He so did. I could tell. I was like, oh, I should have seen what he what happened or whatever. And he, if you haven't seen Infinity War, he's yeah. I need he to watch tra- he, he transitions a lot, but anyway. So um, the movie needed the three hours. Exactly right. Yeah, it did. Needed all of it. Needed every single bit of to it. wrap everything up because had it not, we'd been mad. Want to wait exactly. another six months or longer for it to come out. So I also was talking to my boss about this. I feel like they could have put the first half, or not the first half, but like the first bit of this movie on the end of Infinity War. Okay. Okay, and so they <coughs> wouldn't have had they so wouldn't have had so much to go into. But I think putting it all in the three hours, I think, was nice because it kind of it gave you a callback to Infinity War, which right. was nice. Which but, I didn't see the end of. Right. So, so it helped you out. Helped me out. But yeah. I think I think time wise, they could have put some of the first of this movie on the back end of Infinity War. Probably right. So there you go. Okay, well, that's all we're gonna say. O'clock. I don't think I do I have any more context clues that I can think of. I don't I think we're out of context clues. <laughs> yeah, better not give any more. Exactly. There you go. But if you haven't seen it, go see it and uh, let us know what you think about it for sure. So Tim, anything else before we wrap it up? Anything else? Anything else no. to talk about? Any other things happening in your life since last month? No. Just I'm afraid it's gonna start storming again. It, it, and that is one thing that we did have some storms. Some of you that don't know, we had some tornado air activity really close to us, but um, anyway, we were very lucky in our area. So I have had people ask me, "Aren't you? Don't you live nearby that?" And stuff. Yes, we had a lot of tornadoes and stuff. So that time of year, but you don't want to never hit uh, where my parents are from, Ruston, Louisiana, till the other day. And my sister said, "You will not believe what's not being shown." It's like I thought it just kind of went through the industrial part area. Right. Tore apart Lowe's, 
some other buildings, a gas station we used to stop and get gas at, Walmart, stuff like that. But no, it did actually hit several neighborhoods. One is about a quarter to a half mile from my niece's who lives in a trailer. Wow. And she was very, very lucky. It, right, The neighborhood right behind them tore up these really nice homes. Golly. And I, no telling what it would have done to a trailer. So, you, you know, right now, storms coming, it just makes you really think in an instant, you know, how things can change. So some of you live in tornado type areas and stuff it's just uh you know you really feel lucky and and uh you know i think it totally destroyed um two businesses left the chick-fil-a unharmed you see, <laughs> you see in the video chick-fil-a has a video of their security cameras showing like just stuff blowing right by their building Golly. the building was left unharmed awesome. so how it can hit one building and miss the next one and totally destroy is just it's just kind of crazy but mm-hmm. anyway um uh, that was pretty close to us, close enough for, yeah. for us, and I got a lot of Kim folks and stuff there. Tore, tore up Louisiana Tech University. Yeah, I saw that. So, well, prayers for everybody who's been affected by all the bad weather that we've had down here. So, hopefully, it will. It's starting to subside here a little bit, Tim. And I'm gonna get home that, before it gets uh, any worse. Hopefully, here. it's nice where you're at, and we're gonna continue to um, be here next month, Tim. And let's see what date is that. I will look it up because I always like to know. It'll be June sixth. June. Wow. Is June that crazy? June sixth. June. Okay. We're almost halfway through the year. Now we should say something that what is it? The eighth, right? Is going to be Arcade Repair Tips' eleventh anniversary. Wow. So 2008 to 2019, Tim. Wow. So that's eleven crazy. years on uh, May eighth, our eleven year anniversary. So I didn't say that during the main show, but you know we did. A, we made a big deal of our ten. And you know yeah. I don't really. I only want to make big deals out of like big numbers, I guess. So right. I mean, there's no reason to make a big deal out of the eleventh. Uh, but it will be our 11th anniversary coming up on May 8th. So if you guys remember a year ago, we did a live show. We gave away a whole oh, bunch yeah. of stuff. We had a good time. So you guys can go back and relive that on the 11th anniversary if you wish to. But I think at this point, we're going to sign off. We want to thank all you guys for joining us tonight. Hopefully you got a laugh out of me going to the bathroom during Delusional's arcade thing. Um, I'm sorry about that, Delusional. <laughs> uh, so I'm um, sorry about having to go to the restroom there. But, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. What can you know. do? But anyway, so um, but hopefully you guys go to his channel and sign up. It's got some great content there. Tim, anything else before we before we leave? No, got to get going. Good night, everybody. Thank night, everybody. For Thanks watching. for joining us. We'll see you in June for the next live show. Take care. Have a, a good um, graduation if you guys are graduating. I know a lot of people are. Or anything else that's going on. Wish your mothers happy Mother's Day coming up on the 12th too. So that's important. See you as next well. summer. And we'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> Man.